It's 8 o'clock on today. Coming up, coming home. More than a dozen hostages taken by Hamas in last month's terror attack set to be released in a matter of hours. A tense calm in the Middle East, a pause in the war that's raged on for weeks. We're live in the region with breaking developments. Plus, out of jail, Oscar Pistorius, the Paralympic gold medalist and Olympian known as Blade Runner, granted parole. Ten years after he shot and killed his girlfriend, the announcement coming overnight. The details straight ahead. Then, box office Beyonce. Queen B ready to rule the big screen in her highly anticipated concert film. I am acting a fool in that theater. Do not expect me to have any type of decorum. Plus, how Taylor Swift's movie paved the way for box office gold. The details in Pop Star. And not so secret stash. We've got the winner of the 22nd annual National Dog Show live on the plaza. Stash, the little terrier with the big personality, here to celebrate his win and official title as Best in Show. Today, November 24th, 2023. From New Franklin, Ohio. Celebrating my wife Peggy's 60th birthday. Hello to my students at Logan Christian School. In Logan, Ohio. Visiting from Marble Hill, Missouri. Cincinnati, Ohio. From Jackson, Mississippi. Sending love to Grady J. Terre Haute, Indiana. And Trophy Love, Texas. We are back now. It is 8-12. A huge football weekend it is. And tonight, the Penn State Nittany Lions take on the Michigan State Spartans in a Big Ten showdown right here on NBC. Go That's Penn State. Right. Penn State fans are loyal and loud. And our <laughs> Harry Smith is loyal and loud. Traveled to Happy Valley, Pennsylvania to learn about the origins of their most famous chant. Harry, good morning. We have all heard so much yeah. about this story. We can't wait. Well, think about it because you have a lot of Penn State in your family, family, right? Penn State. What's the, how does the cheer go? We are. And then they say, Penn, Penn State. State. Right. Okay. So that's a great cheer. Everybody knows it. Is there an extra connection to history in this story? Well, let's find out. For as long as anyone can remember, Penn State has been a football powerhouse. And their home field, Beaver Stadium, wild, loud, 11 on the energy meter. What is it like on a football Saturday? when this place is packed. It's electric. Uh, you stand on the field, especially during a whiteout, you can't hear the person next to you. A whiteout, a night game, where all the fans wear white. They'll put me right out here in the end zone. Welcome back to Beaver Stadium! It's especially loud when cheerleader Ben Malloy gets on the mic and the crowd chants, Fellow cheerleader, Jordan Frank. Yeah, and it's just incredible to have 110 plus thousand people just all at the same place, doing the same thing. It's just, it's really beautiful. It's hard to believe it hasn't always been like this. When I first started going to school here, this was a relatively quiet stadium. So this is where Penn State football and basketball play-by-play -play legend, Steve Jones. <laughs> there wasn't the same excitement, and they were trying to get more juice into this place. Penn State cheerleaders in the 1970s figured the chant, we are Penn State, would unite and energize the crowd. It was not an immediate success. It was a struggle <laughs> for, for everybody to get involved in doing it. After several years, though, it caught on big time. I can be literally yeah, anywhere, anywhere in the world, anywhere. and it will never fail that somebody will, either an alumni or somebody knows that we are chant. What those cheerleaders did not know at the time is their words were echoing some remarkable school history. There's mythology. Yes. There's history. Yes. And then there is we are Penn State. Right. In 1946, the Nittany Lions had two black players, Wally Triplett and Denny Hogarth. The team was scheduled to play the University of Miami in segregated Florida. A team meeting was held. The decision, unanimous. We're teammates. We all do this or we don't do this. We're not going to travel without them. We're not going to play the game without them. The Miami game was canceled. The next season, undefeated Penn State was invited to the Cotton Bowl in Dallas. 
The bowl asked Penn State to leave its black players, Triplett and Hogarth, home. This time, All-American guard Steve Suey declared a meeting would not be necessary. He said, we're Penn State. The Cotton Bowl capitulated. Triplett scored a key touchdown in the game. Is it important to connect that history from the 1940s with what people cheer here on Saturdays? It is because it's important to remember your history and understand that you had people on this campus that thought in an enlightened way and in a proper way that set the tone for decades to come. The modern day cheerleaders agree. So for me personally, as a black African American on the team, it's incredible to, to know that history and to carry on that history in today's modern, modern times. And there's more, of course. Wally Triplett, the great player, yeah. he became the first black who was drafted into the National Football Player, mm. the National Football League. Not the first black player, the first one drafted, wow. right? And there's a guy at Penn State, uh, Lou Prado, who is just this amazing historian of the school, and he's the one who really pulled a lot of these threads apart over the years. But one of the other things, once the uh, Cotton Bowl capitulated and said, okay, come, yeah. there was no place for the Penn State football team to stay. Mm. No hotel in Dallas in 1948 would allow a black player to enter. Uh, so they stayed at an old naval base north of town. It's such a powerful story. Do they share that with students? I mean, do the students at it's, Penn State even know it? A lot of a lot of them don't. And a lot of, well, there are a lot of Penn State grads in this building. Yeah. And they say, really? Yeah. We've never heard that before. It just shows you the importance yeah. of leadership mm -hmm. and how you set the tone at the top. Right? Yeah. It's a good story. It's oh, great, Harry, Harry, come on, the best. <laughs> And if you want to hear that chant today, you are in luck. Penn State plays Michigan State tonight at 7.30 Eastern on NBC, streaming on Peacock. You may hear Hallie Jackson screaming outside. You sure will. Outside. You'll hear my <laughs> sister, you'll hear my dad, you'll hear all of them screaming. That's for sure. And now they know a lot more about the yeah. school. All right, yep. Harry, thank you so much you for bet. that. It was great. And guys, I know the days are all confusing now. Today's Friday, okay. but let's look about, let's talk about Sunday because we've got Sunday night, football night in America. The Ravens are headed out to L.A. to take on the Chargers. It's going to be partly cloudy, 64 degrees. It's pretty good weather for a football game. Be sure to watch Sunday night, football night in America. I wish it was 64 degrees right now. That would be nice. Yes. Yeah. Thank you for that, Dylan. Now to a yearly Friday after Thanksgiving tradition around here. We have the top dog from yesterday's 22nd annual National Dog Show here with us. Show host Dave Fry. Nice to see you along Thank with you. Best in Sto Show stash Hi. in the house and his handler Margie. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks so much for being here. Thank what was it like, the big moment? It was so exciting. It was just a wonderful experience, and my dog just showed his heart out. Uh, talk about the training that goes into this. You must work so hard. He, there's a lot of grooming that goes into it, <laughs> and the training is fairly minimal. He just has to stand and look beautiful and move so well like he's built to move. I have to ask yeah. for my family, you mentioned grooming. When we watch at home, we're always like, can the dog see? Is the dog comfortable like that? He can see just <laughs> fine, and when the hair is combed down, he, it's hard to see through it, but he sees out the side. Okay. And then when he's home, it separates into bunches, and he the can see just fine. The way it needs to. Fine. He's got that <laughs> so cute. Yeah, I want to I find out the name of his barber. I like I like the style. Dave, talk he's to got, us. He's got better hair care products than we <laughs> no, do. No, I'm sure. Yeah. Talk to us about Stash, though. What made this the best in show? Well, he's a great specimen of his breed. If Margie can put him down on the ground, you can see he's got these little four-inch legs legs and a long body and it gives him a great stride he's a beautiful mover beautifully groomed impeccably presented by marjorie Perfect. and Look he's won that. a bunch of best in shows i mean it wasn't his first time uh, in the road did you yeah. know the second he walked out this was it that he was best in show well i've seen him before and i love him so, <laughs> so you had an inkling uh, so yeah it, but it was he had seven great dogs out there at the end and it's always fun to see who's going to win it I mean, what's not to love uh, so perfect. well behaved yeah. right? Right. so cute and how about that stash <laughs> Okay. <laughs> thank you guys oh, thank so you. much thank and congratulations you. again Great to, to Marjorie here. and Stash. Thank you much so much for stopping by. Yeah, Thanks. up next, our series Inside the Game. Good Jacob Soboroff is kicking it with the Pro Bowl punter of the Seattle Seahawks, who is part of a really interesting trend in the NFL. But first, this is today on NBC.
With our special series inside the game. You know, a lot of people, if you're anything like my family, you spent a lot of your day yesterday watching football. <laughs> oh, yeah, and it ended with a great nightcap last night. The San Francisco 49ers overpowered the Seattle Seahawks 31 to 13 with Christian McCaffrey rushing for two touchdowns. And you may have noticed during the game the two teams have something in common. Our Jacob Soberoff found out all about it. Jacob, good morning. What's up, you guys? Good morning. That's right. Both the Seahawks and the 49ers are part of a major trend in the last few years. Australian punters, athletes from down under who grew up with the skill set of a local sport and adapted it to America's biggest game. I headed to Seattle to speak with their Pro Bowl punter, Michael Dixon, and see if I could learn how to kick in even one of the two sports. Seahawks punter Michael Dixon grew up in Australia loving football, but for him, that meant something like this. <laughs> Australian rules football. We grew up kicking a football to each other. Instead of playing catch, we would go kick it. You go kick it? Yeah, I'd get home from school and go kick the footy and do that every day. I was obsessed with it. It's the most popular sport down under and even played here in the States by club teams like the Seattle Grizzlies. The rules can be complicated, but crucially, every player on the field has to be good at kicking, particularly while running, which has helped Dixon become the most successful example of a growing trend in the NFL, Australian punters. There are currently four in the league. Dixon, Mitch Wisnowski of the 49ers, Lou Headley in New Orleans, and Cameron Johnston of the Texans. Taking the skills and instincts of Australian football and translating them to the booming long kicks in the American game. I think it's helped me out, um, probably helped some other Australians out. It gives you a bit of a head start, but then it's the rest is on you. Several of those punters attended the Pro Kick Academy in Australia that pumps out future all-stars, training athletes who get recruited for college teams here in America, including for both teams in this past January's national championship game. It's obvious that there's a lot of differences, but what does translate between the Aussie game and the NFL? If you have a bit of a bad drop, I can like kind of move my leg and correct it. I feel like I can kind of save it just by having the feel for it from my old sport. But while some of the skills carried over, the rules and equipment encountered some culture shock. When you guys were kids and you would watch American football, did you understand it? I only saw American football if it was in a movie or something, and I had no idea. I played Madden and would just pick Hail Mary every single play. Do you remember the first time that you held an American football? The first one I got was in uh, was for Christmas in 2014 by my parents because I told them I wanted to punt. So they bought me one, got it shipped from over here, and went to the park and started kicking it. The first full American football game Dixon says he ever watched was the first one he played in for the University of Texas. That whole freshman year is such a blur to me. Oh. I had no idea what I was doing. I hadn't really, like, 
put on pads and a helmet. Wait a minute. So you had never even put on pads I, and a helmet? I had put on like a helmet that was like just like a piece of plastic fake helmet. Like it wasn't a real helmet. So you were in Australia, you were basically playing with toys, like American yeah. football toys. Yeah, the helmet was probably from some other era that we had found on eBay. But that was long, long ago. Now Dixon is considered by many to be the best hunter in the NFL. One of the few who can create highlight reel plays for good reasons. Like two years ago when he punted twice on the same play. Oh, here's a block. Blocked off the foot of Dixon, and Dixon now kicks it. Before you did it, you weren't sure if it was actually legal. No, I just did it. And that's where it just kind of flashed back to my old playing days. And while this reporter had no chance of doing that. This was so much smaller compared to the Aussie yeah, football. pointy as well. Michael did show me some of the basics of hunting. Catch okay. it, spin it, and then kick it. Otherwise, it'll get blocked. Dude. OK, just got the snap. Find it. Got it. That's nice. In both sports. Ooh, that's not bad. But even with a great coach. Point your toe and just swing. People of America, forgive me. I still don't think I'll be making the pros. Watch the ball, point your toe, aim at your target, and, uh, and explode through it. Oh. <laughs> in America or Australia. You like that? You like it? <laughs> <laughs> this is his reaction. Ah. Yeah, so I didn't learn to kick in either sport. Uh, so, guys, those Aussie punters' jobs are safe for me. I asked Michael, since he came from Australia to play in the NFL, if he could see NFL players being able to go the other way around Aussie rules uh, to play themselves. And he said 100%. He's got a few guys in mind, so maybe we can try to put on an exhibition in the offseason. I'd go check it out. Back to you guys. <laughs> I wouldn't pick Jacob on my team. I, I, I wouldn't. I, I disagree. Yeah, I, think so I think Jacob's a sleeper here, guys. I think we're on to something. I think there was some good editing there. I don't know. Oh, yeah. oh. All right, up next, some great Black Friday deals from fashion and beauty to tech, even a TV that's more than meets the eye. But first, this is today on NBC.
right, we are back with the Black Friday edition of today. Best sellers from home to tech to fashion. There's something for everyone on your list, maybe even yourself. Joining us is Shop Today editorial director Adriana Brock to dish on all these great deals. And you know the drill to shop with us. Just scan the QR code. Adriana, good morning hey, to you. Hey, good morning. Okay, this one I have had my eye on for quite some time. Tell so, us about this. So have I. It's been on my list. But before I get into it, I want to talk to you guys about Shop Today Savings. It is the first official Today browser extension for your desktop, for your Chrome browser, and it basically finds coupons all over the internet for you at over 40,000 retailers and online stores. Oh, that's awesome. So you kind of set it and forget it. It runs on, when you go to checkout, it scans the internet for all those codes, and you can go to today.com slash savings to learn more and download it right today. now. Today. Do right, right now. now. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And then if you're ready to shop for some stuff, you can scan the QR code <laughs> with this first one. It's the Samsung Frame TV, and yes. it's up to 35% off today. This is an awesome find. Today is one of those days where people are buying those big ticket items, especially when it comes to home tech. Samsung, this TV is one of their top selling products. It also rarely goes on sale. Mm -hmm. Today, you can get it up to 35% uh, off. This 50 inch right now is under $900, which is a crazy bargain. What's really cool about the Frame TV is that it kind of duels as a yes. TV when it's on. Yeah. And when it's off, it functions as an art piece. Yeah. And it kind of goes into this matte display mode, which we have here right now. But when you have it on and you're watching sports and all your favorite shows, you get that QLED 4K display that you love. And the frame comes in yeah. different colors. Which it I does, it does. Uh, let's go over here. Our family sometimes creates messes, just like every family. What is this thing? Because it looks like it's like a, a, a all-in-one kind of deal. It, it really is. It's called the Green Machine from Bissell, and Bissell is known for their home cleaning products and appliances. This is an internet favorite. Shop Today editors also really love this. We used it a few years ago during the pandemic. It's on sale right now for $89.99, and this is going to be your upholstery cleaner and your mm. carpet cleaner. Wow. It cleans up all the messes from wine to those questionable kid messes, your pet yeah. messes. The brand also says it does remove odors, too. You put in a little bit of the solution that it comes right. with, and you mix it up, and it does all the work for you. Very Amazing. nice. Yeah, really cool, cool one. Okay, smart home. Tell okay, us that. so this is one of my favorite finds for, like, the under $10 tech upgrade that you need in your life. It's the Casa Smart Plus, uh, Smart light bulbs. So this is an easy way to upgrade all your light bulbs around the house to be voice activated or you can control them via the app. So I have it here set on red and green lights. You could turn it on and off straight from your app so you don't even have to get up and flip a switch anymore. Ooh, and like I cool. said, right now it's $7.99 for the bulbs, each yeah. one. Really good stocking stuffer. And it also comes in non-colored, I assume. Yes, you can like, set it to your warm this light. This is not part of my decor. At all. Exactly. You can set it to your regular warm light, daylight. Actually, one of our editors uses this as a sunrise uh, alarm sort of lighting because okay. so, you could set a schedule on it too. Yeah, we have a bunch of these. They're amazing. Yeah. Uh, I love a good slipper. And Okay. So cozy. Do you? So cozy. So Love cozy. Them. These are from Deer Foams, which this brand is synonymous with slippers. If you guys haven't heard about it, right now they are on sale for under twenty dollars. You can get some for the whole family. Oh, they're cozy. made. Yeah, yeah, they're cozy inside, and the outside is made with like a durable outsole, so you could take them outside too if you need to go check the mail, walk the dog. Um, really easy, no brainer. Also a really good gift idea. And yeah. it looks like men, women, all men, gender. women, Everything. everybody. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Very cool. Yes. And then moving on to beauty. Yeah. Beauty right now, luxury beauty is a great time to buy. Amazon has a ton of deals on the uh, Sunday Riley Beauty. This is our favorite one. It's the A plus retinol. So if you're looking for anti-aging skincare, right now is the time to stock up on this one. It's under thirty dollars okay. for a half ounce. I'm listening. Everybody can use it. You don't yeah, need any I'm, retinol. I'm, I'm, you don't I'm, need I'm, it. I'm listening. Tom has a natural glow. <laughs> yes. No, but it's really good for reducing the fine lines and um, dark spots too. Very our nice. audience really loves this. Talk yeah. to us about these coats though. Okay. Checking out these jackets coats. back here, guys. I don't know if you guys remember the Amazon coat that went viral a few yes, years ago. Yes, I do. It went viral. Everybody had it. The brand is Oral-A. Right now, they're having up to 50% off coats for the whole family, not just 50 the virus. 50% off? Yeah. Okay. Not just for the, the main Amazon one that went viral. It's for the whole family. So even the kids can get in yeah. on it. This is such a good time to stock up on clothing that's super on and sale and marked down. Yeah. Yes, you get the down alternative. You get the... the Sherpa-lined mm -hmm. hoods. They're also removable. You get all the pockets. They've got a slightly oversized fit, which is kind of nice, not just trendy, yeah. but also you can layer up. 50% on Amazon or on, on their on website? On Amazon. Okay. okay. Yeah. Is this part of us? Or okay, this is our last <laughs> one. Yeah, is this how you this got here? Real this is how I got <laughs> okay. here, okay, guys? No, this is a really cool one. It's from Segway. It's the e-scooter. It's made for kids ages 6 to 12 years old. Okay. And this is going to be on everybody's Christmas list because right now it's 40% off. 
It brings it to under, uh, it's $149.99, and it's a great find for the kid, or the kid at heart, honestly. Wait, how much again? It's $149.99. Uh, okay. Yeah, it's really cool. It accelerates as you start kicking. It also has a brake, so there's safety built in. I'm not going to test it out, because I want to come back, but <laughs> yeah. thank you so much. I want to take that to breaking yeah. news, like show up and break news. There you go. Okay. We'll see about that. Yeah. All right. Appreciate you so much. Just so you know, today yeah. receives a commission for purchases made through the QR codes or the links on our website. We should mention this segment is paid for by Amazon. To purchase any of these items, scan the QR code at the bottom of your screen. All right, straight ahead, here she is, Marlo Thomas, and some amazing kids are here to close out our 20th year of thanks and giving, which helps support the incredible work at St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital. But first, this is Today on NBC. up the 20th year celebration of our annual thanks and giving series about the life-saving work at St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital. All right, and with us now is Marlo Thomas, their national outreach director and patients, Amani Matabin, and siblings, Javon and Jaquela Bass. We also have some kids from St. Jude and their families decorating a special 20-year ornament. You can see them here. We're also giving away with gift cards and swag to the crowd here at the plaza. Everyone's going to get one. Good so morning, cool. everybody. Oh, my goodness. Marlo, it's so nice to have you. Thank, thank you. you so much for everything that you do thank you, thank today you and us. every day. Tell us, what is the true essence? of thanks and giving. It's to give thanks for the healthy kids in your life and give to those who are not. So that's why we ask you to go out shopping, look for our St. Jude logo, all our fabulous partners like Best Buy and Domino's Pizza and Chili's and K Jewelers and Williams Sonoma. And they're going to ask you to leave a little something at the register for the kids of St. Jude. And so do that. And also you can donate at stjude.org. But the most important thing to remember is that no family ever gets a bill at St. Jude for treatment, yes. travel, housing, or food, and we and it costs 3.8 million a day to More support say that again, our yeah. work at St. Jude, and 89 percent of that money comes from our donors. Wow. So that is the essence of thanks and giving. 3.8 million a day—that is incredible, right. Marlo. That's so right. people out there wanting to give, yes. there's so many ways to donate, and it goes right to the families. That's right. It goes right to research and treatment. Just look for this logo, and you're going to be out there shopping and spending money anyway. So leave a little something. <laughs> for the children of St. Jude. That's true. I have to say hi to Javon and Jaquela. And hi, Amani. Hi. Hello. Now, Javon and Jaquela, you actually were part of our series 10 years ago. Yes, we were. Celebrating this moment and commemorating the work that St. Jude's does. Yes. Talk to, we're so thankful that you're here today. How are you marking the holiday? What are you thinking about? Um, so I'm marking the holiday, um, spend time with family and friends. Yes. And what are you thankful for, Jaquela? I'm thankful to actually be cancer free. Yeah. Incredible. And Amani here. This is it. Money. This is what you paid for yeah. when you went out yeah. shopping. This is it. <laughs> and what are you guys thankful for this holiday season? Imani, what are you thankful for? 
<laughs> we're thankful that she and her sister are healthy and yeah. we're here with everybody. <laughs> we're happy you're here too. So Thank happy you. you're here. Imani, what's on that Christmas wish list? I see you smiling. <laughs> I know you've got something on that list. She said, what do you want for Christmas? She told me downstairs she wanted a Rapunzel or Cinderella book. Oh I, I, something tells me that's going to come through. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Thank you so much yeah. for thank all the work you. that you do. And thank you to all of you guys thank for being you. here and all of your families. We wish you a happy Thanksgiving. Thank, thank you. you. All right, coming up on Huda and Jenna, fashion mogul Jenna Lyons opens up about the Real Housewives reunion and the new love in her life. And then, you know, I know we're all stuffed on turkey, yeah, yes. right? But if you want some pizza, we've got a buddy up that you'll want to see coming up on the third hour. We're back after your local news. <laughs> This morning on the third hour of today, a very cheesy buddy up. Can it be too yeah, needy? Yes, yes. You are over needy. See what happens when we learn the art of pizza making. Plus, Chanel logging some mural miles in Philadelphia. With the running group that's about more than staying fit. Then later, a robot rumble! Craig taking us behind the scenes of one of the craziest combat competitions you'll ever see. And we're talking turkey in today food, a delicious way to turn those leftovers into a whole new meal. Today, Friday, November 24th, 2023. From Studio 1A in Rockefeller Plaza, this is the third hour of today. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the third hour of today. Al, along with Chanel, Craig, Dylan. Hopefully that tryptophan has worn off. <laughs> You're wide awake. Uh, but we are thankful that you are starting your day with us. Everybody have a good Thanksgiving? I think so. Uh, yeah. I, I think I did. Yeah. I, I'm sure it was great. That's I'm right. sure we had a great Thanksgiving. So obviously it's, bourbon was involved. You know, oh, you yeah. know what's funny? We didn't, aren't celebrating Thanksgiving on Thanksgiving. We're celebrating today. Oh, that's cool. Yes, because we have family who couldn't come down in, in, oh. until very late on Thanksgiving. Oh. I didn't want to start dinner at 6 o'clock at night. And they're like the family that provides all the other kids that sit at the kids' table. Oh. So now Thanksgiving is Friday. I love that. All right. well, Did you do you your go. list this year? Oh, the list is made. All right. The list has been okay. made for a so, long time. So we've gotten through, most of us. Uh, yeah. How was yours? Uh, you had the parade. parade. It was the parade and then went out to dinner. It was great. Yeah. Where'd you go? Uh, well, yeah. you know, we just went out. Okay. But it, it, what was nice, it, we, we went to Danielle. <laughs> Okay, a lovely, lovely restaurant. It's just me, Nick, and Deborah now. So it's, it's sad, really. No, it's yeah, not. It was no, I've been smiling about that. For it was fantastic. <laughs> All right, so now what do you want to All right, so we're about? preparing for the holidays. And, of course, uh, here's the age-old debate. Okay. Uh, when do you put up your Christmas decorations, your holiday decorations? We put them up the Sunday after Thanksgiving. Oh, wow. That's, mm -hmm. that's, okay. that's pretty impressive. Uh, it varies from year to year. It usually depends on whether we... Let me re-ask that. When does Lindsay put, put up, up the decorations? Yeah. Um, we, whether we've, if we haven't traveled for Thanksgiving, if we've stayed at home, then sometimes we'll put them up. We'll start putting up the weekend after. But they also go up in phases, like ah, yeah. okay. lights, yeah. and, you know, the, the, all the other yeah. stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but they, everything's up by the first week in December. Oh, first week. So you don't know not to ask me that question because we travel for, for Christmas. December but, 24th. But this year, there was one night. Was that, oh, that was when I had COVID. So it was in 2020. Oh. And so I didn't have the bandwidth to do anything, oh. and I, we didn't know how it was going to work. And you know what? Would My you? husband, in the middle of the night, like, made Christmas happen. We woke up the That's next morning. He was a little elf. It was the, yeah. I like the, 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 the decorations. Awesome. First week in December. Yeah. You know, this, so, so neighbor.com okay. surveyed 2,000 folks. 34% start decorating the day after Thanksgiving. Wow. I do today. Have family in town. They help with everything. We uh, get all the, my mother in law's there. We get all the boxes out of storage. Right. And okay. 13% wait until tomorrow, uh, Saturday after Thanksgiving. 16%. Hold off until the first week of December. So as long as they're up by the end of the first week, it sounds like we're yeah, okay. I'm, I'm How good. long do you keep them up? Oh. Um, uh, that usually because we're away for the Rose Parade. So right when we get back, like January 2nd, 3rd, Good. we take them down. So that that said, it, it's become kind of sad in our house because the kids are, are older now. So usually Courtney's not there now yeah. that she's got a kid. Uh, Nick, uh, Leela's in Paris. Mm -hmm. So it's just Nick. And Nick is kind of it's like, you are going to come over here oh. and you're going to have a good time <laughs> helping us. This is a family. Uh, you like it or not. And, you know, by, some by the time we've got start to string the lights, he's gone. Yeah. Yeah. When do we take the Rockefeller tree down? January 6th. That's usually, usually around. Oh, that's usually when we have to do it. Well, 
I don't know. Yeah. Because that's usually all, my for, sign. For our house, Ollie's birthday is January 2nd, which I feel like is the worst birthday on the planet because everybody is partied out. Oh. Nobody yeah. wants any more gifts. Nobody, right. Like, even he doesn't want any more cakes and cookies and gifts. Like, it's mm. done. So we get rid of all of, you know, the Christmas decorations mm-hmm. so that we can start, yeah, yeah. start anew. That's nice. So obviously, you're, but you're still drinking because your your camera's off. <laughs> That, that was last year, and that was a Christmas morning picture. Rusty was, was not having it. Not having it. Brian <laughs> clearly wasn't having it. We, I was, but you all was look mess. happy. Oh, yes. So cute. All here. right, so, so now this begins the holiday party season, mm-hmm. okay? So the question is, how late is too late? Uh, to cancel on somebody. It, I, I think it depends on the circumstance. Yes. Fair. Because if you've got like an emergency that comes right. up, I think That's it's right. perfectly acceptable. Mm-hmm. Uh, otherwise, though, I'd say... You, you have know, to show up. Yeah. You do, but a week before. Yeah. But, well, I think it also depends on the event. That's what... Right. If it's like a oh. sit-down dinner... Yes. Yes. Okay. Then certainly a week. Now, yeah. I will say, for me, if we have something, and I've, if I've had to spend money, uh-huh. and, and, I, and we base how much we spend on the number of people coming. That's right. True. And then people stop showing up. Oh, like if you're hosting a party. Right. But yeah. like if it's a big party, uh, two people it's not, not showing up. But if it's difference. a dinner party, to your point. Yeah, if it's a dinner That's party. That's fair. So right. there, uh, are one of your favorite magazines, and I know Betty Joe's favorite oh, magazine. Oh, Southern yeah. Living. Southern Living, because I know uh, you guys got in the magazine well, for her, uh, her, her mac and cheese. Uh, it's based on the size of the event. For oh. small group gatherings, give three days to one week. Yeah, that's fair. Okay? That's fair. Uh, for larger parties, you give a notice within the week. And for an event like a wedding or a fundraiser, you got to give... Uh, you got to give two weeks notice. Because they have a lot of people have the little, you know, yeah, what's the, the word? seating arrangement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 the little okay. seating okay. arrangements. So that, those all make sense to me. Yes, yeah. those, yeah. those seem like good, good. rules. All right, good, yeah. man- good manners. Okay, this okay. has really nothing to do with the holiday. Although, uh, as family gets together with group chats, oh. they, they get oh, it. Like so, uh, uh, so many. Uh, yeah, how many group chats are you part of? When you're Ooh, well, well, including well. ours. Yeah. yeah, we have like six different ones. There's some people included. I'm on at least. I'm probably at least nine or ten. Okay. I think it's the large family one on Brian's side because Brian and I love them dearly. Brian's family up. talks about everything all, all the time. It's a running commentary. And, and it's like yeah. nine o'clock at night is way too late for me yeah. for the ding, yeah. ding, ding. You, so I've silenced the notifications. You know, the, the best part of the, of the group chat, it happens a couple of times a year. What? Someone responds to their own chat. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, and oftentimes when it happens, yeah. it's not remotely appropriate or, or for the think, chat that you're or in. you think that somebody isn't on the chat. Right. And you're talking <laughs> oh, about yeah. it. Oh, yeah. You don't and seem like, like you a know chat. What? Group chat kind of guy. Well, yeah. Well, I'm on our group chats, yeah. and you know, we've got, you know, you we got send, small. Like, pick gifts. Back yes, I like, like this. A lot of gifts. A lot of gifts. I like the gifts. You like know gifts. what stops his gifts? What? When you send him a gif of him. Uh, oh my <laughs> like, goodness. Because there are like dozens of them. And you respond to one of his gifts with like a real good gift. Did he say? I'm done. I'm not playing anymore. Oh, I have a true story. Okay. I don't know why I'm sharing this story. So we did a, you know, I like my girlfriend getaways. And so we did, I think we were in LA or somewhere like that. And we were on the, like, going to a swimming pool or something. And I had some new swimming suit or whatever. And one of my friends is like, ooh, look at Chanel's butt or whatever she said, right? So she took a picture of me. <laughs> it's fine. It's not. It's fine. It's, I know this story. It ends here. Oh, you know yeah. what happened. Yeah. I you know don't what keep happened? going. <laughs> so she took the picture, but she was trying to tell me because I'm so self-conscious. And she's like, look, you're fine. Yeah. You know, whatever. So then I sent it. To, I thought I was sending it to them. This is a picture of you in a bikini. I wasn't in a bikini. I was in a regular bathing suit. But, but it you was, could see your butt. It was my butt. It was like actually just my butt. Yeah. I sent it to the mom chat group at school. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody thinks you think very highly of your behind. Get a load of this. <laughs> Check these out. Died. I forgot. We you were. You know I'm Christian because I'm turning the other cheek. <laughs> I went to Dylan, do you remember? I remember. I was what <laughs> horrified. You, what did you say after like, you said it? Horrified. You say I'm like, even now, why did I even tell y'all? I'm wow. horrified. What did that's, you say? that's literally a butt dial. I said, I am, I said, I am so embarrassed. I'm so, and you know, <laughs> some of the moms are like, whoa, you know. <laughs> Didn't you try to fix it by saying I, I meant to send it, send it to my husband? <laughs> I didn't even know how to be. And then I was like, I was with some girlfriends, and like they were trying to tell me that the fit was okay. It was so bad. So bad. <laughs> you know, you know it's bad when our producers in our ear go, wrap up, wrap, 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 wrap. Okay. Wow. Well, happy Thanksgiving. Whoa. Just ahead, you need to see what happened when the four of us buddied up for a lesson in pizza making. Then later, a run with a view. And not, not the one that Chanel provided. 
She hits the streets of Philly with a running group that combines fitness with art. And you won't be back for the rest of the show. Exactly. So we don't want people to think that you were, no, you, but you had a previous thing you had to run out. Okay. Gotta go do something with that mom's group. Third hour today, I'll be right back. We are back with our series, Buddy Up. Now, if you've already had your fill of turkey, how about some pizza? <laughs> the four of us got together for a cooking class recently to learn the art of making the perfect pie. All right, guys, we are at Pizza School New York City. Thought we'd maybe grab a little slice of life. Uh -huh. Oh, that's cheesy. Very cheesy. Okay, Extra let's cheese. Go. Let's go. Class was in session at Pizza School NYC. For over 13 years, founders Mark and Jenny Bello have guided students through the basics of making the perfect pie. To date, they've made over 100,000. I've never made my own pizza. In your life? Not really. Oh, really? You've not never made your own pizza? pizza? No, actually, we've done it maybe oh, yeah, once or twice. Yeah, taking it out of the box and out of the freezer. Yeah. After we washed our hands and suited up, it was time for school to begin. Or as we like to say, we're going to give you this information uh, on a knead the dough basis. Oh, oh, that's... oh wow. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to show you guys how to make dough. Right? All right. All right, so first thing is um, we have our yeast. To activate the yeast uh, in this case, because we're going to be making what's called a quick rise dough, we're going to use some warm water. Okay. okay. Temperature, roughly 100 degrees Fahrenheit. You're 98.6 degrees on a good day, right? It feels warm to the Red touch. Dylan. She's usually yeah. colder than that. Oh, <laughs> wow. After stirring the yeast and water together, we added a bit of sugar, some flour, tablespoon of salt, and olive oil. Now we're doing a method we call the castle and moat method. What I want you guys to do is push your flour to the center of the bowl, okay. like you're making a sand castle. All flour in the center. And then you've got that moat around the perimeter. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and add that liquid into your moats. Okay. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to storm the castle. All right. Oh, storm in the castle. Storm in the castle. Storm in the castle. Right. Wow, a group of class clowns was in need of some new material. Well, can you over need this too much? Or? Yes, you can. Yeah. You are can it be yeah. too needy? Yes. You are over needy. Yeah. No, you're good. You guys are good. How does it look, Mark? You have not gone past the point of dough return. Oh! He's here till Thursday. Yeah. Weddings and bar mitzvahs. We cut our dough into fourths, sealing it away for about 45 minutes so it could rise to the occasion. Soon, it was time to stretch. The stretching technique. Uh, 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 it's the first time me and Craig are on the same page. We have come up with a mnemonic, two words that has changed the dough stretching life of tens of thousands of people. <laughs> we call this soft bongos. Soft bongos. Oh, yes. So watch. So what I'm doing oh, wow. here... I hear the rhythm. So soft. <laughs> soft the bongos. softest bongos right here. Next stretching technique. We call this gravity. Gravity. You hold the edge oh, and you turn the dough. We even learned the art of the toss. Mark took our topping orders and encouraged us to think outside the pizza box. I'm gonna do anchovies with basil. I'm going to do uh, mushrooms and then I'll top it with basil. Top it with basil. Okay, cheese wise, are we going shreds like I had? You wanna do a fresh What would you mozzarella? do? We have fresh mozzarella. I'll do fresh. The bomb. Mm, sausage, peppers, and mushrooms. Okay, and what kind of cheese? Shredded cheese. Shreds, okay, you got it. Mark, I'm gonna do sausage, 
mushrooms and shreds. Yes. yes. Cool. Yeah. When we launched our pies into the oven, it was history in the baking. Here we go. All right. Wish me luck, guys. Finally, the moment of truth. Tasting a pizza are hard work. Here you go, guys. Nice. Yeah. Cheers. 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 Yeah. Good pizza making. Oh, that's really good. Oh, that's good. Oh As we God. like to say, you've all graduated oh. uh, mozzarella cum laude. Yeah! Right. All right. Four perfect pies, even though the people weren't. That was good pizza. That was so good. Mm, mm. Well, Pizza School NYC hosts in-person and virtual classes, and they're available for holiday parties as well. And get this, next spring, they're launching a pizza retreat mm. in upstate New York. Wow. Sign, sign me up. A pizza I'm retreat. Ready. I'd go. I still have my dough. In the freezer. Have you should used probably it use that. I know. I'm yeah. Saving Why it for a special it? occasion. No, use it now. Make more. Coming up before the New York City Marathon, Chanel laced up her sneakers to find out about a running group that's more than just exercise. Then later, Craig learns what it's like in the high tech robot combat arena and tries to take down a Roker robot. Uh, of course he will. Quite the battle. Uh. We'll be right back. If you hadn't heard, our girl Chanel, she pulled off a huge milestone this year when she ran the New York City Marathon. But before that, she went back to her roots for a run in Philly. She laced up her sneakers for a tour of Philadelphia unlike any other with a group that combines exercise with art. The murals in Philadelphia, they tell the stories of where we come from. And I think there's a natural connection between the strength and resilience that you see in those stories with athleticism and running and fitness as well. In the city of brotherly love, the murals are hard to miss. With over 4,000 public works of art, Philadelphia is known as the mural capital of the world. It's the backdrop for Mural Miles, a nonprofit organization that combines fitness and art. Craig Oppenheimer started the group after a run with some friends in 2021. Tell me what you think it is about running and art and fitness. Like, how does it all kind of fit together in your mind? We run past these murals all the time, and we don't stop to take a moment to learn who the artist was or learn the backstory about it. We go on group runs, we visit murals, and it's an art education and fitness experience all in one. I joined Craig and nearly 40 people for my first group run. Let's give it up for Chanel. Every month, members lace up their sneakers, posting their roots and mural stops on social media, inviting all ages, all levels, all for free. I like the opportunity to get to meet some of the artists who create these murals. It's a very diverse group, in all different ages. All everybody is from different places. What is it about running that you love? It makes uh, me feel that I can accomplish things, even though sometimes I think that I cannot do it. With every run, Mural Miles hopes to inspire people through movement and the art that's become unique to this city. For people who aren't from Philadelphia, why are the murals so special to this city? When people are really proud of the murals that are in the neighborhood. They're a catalyst for change. They help make neighborhoods safer um, and more of an enjoyable place to be. 
Artists like Eric Oakday and David Gwynn are hitting the pavement too. And what does it feel like as an artist to receive this kind of support? You have a sense that people will see it, but you, you're gone. And so to have a group bring 100 people by your work, it's, it's amazing. Running with the group has been incredible. It's just a wonderful community. I'm not a runner and I've never run with a group. So do you think it helps when you're with a group, we're all kind of, you know, around the same purpose? If you're surrounded by people who are doing the exact same thing and are encouraging, it's an amazing opportunity to do something like that. All right, thank you guys for coming out. Today we're gonna run two miles. We're gonna stop at four murals. Before we got started, the group turned the questions on me. Why do you think Philadelphia is the best city in the world? <laughs> Philadelphia is honest. They love hard. This is a very special place, so I wouldn't try it right here. <laughs> the organization is also giving back by curating more art for the city, like this mural that kicked off our run. So this mural is called Equilibrium by Eric Oakday, 2022. Equilibrium is a mural reflecting the theme of movement, both literally and figuratively. Okay, let's run. Yeah. Revisited by David Gwynn, 2013. You get a cheesesteak after this. Convergence by Andrea Grasso, 2021. Finally, our last mural stop. So this is another one of David's murals. Give it up. For these runners, Mural Miles has helped them find more than fitness and art. They found community. This was Awesome, awesome. Still so proud. I know, and such a great tour. So yeah, proud. Yeah, it really is. Mm. Nice way to see it. Uh, Chanel, thank you. Mural Miles, by the way, currently raising money to create a mural that's specifically catered to blind and visually impaired runners. Mm. So you can head to their website to learn, out, uh, learn a little bit more about that. Awesome. All right, coming up, a first-hand look at a second-hand shop created by a fashionista who built an inclusive vintage clothing shop for all women. Then later in She Made It, Jill meets a mom whose daughter inspired her to think small, and it's paying off big time. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Vintage fashion is having a moment, for, but for some plus size women, finding the right fit can be frustrating until now. I recently met the owner of a boutique here in New York that is stylish, fun, and fits just right. The plus size shopping landscape is getting better, but we're still offered such basic clothes. Clothes that don't speak to me and that aren't inspiring. Emma Zach has always had a flair for style. Where did your love of fashion come from? It definitely came from my grandma, who I'm named after. My mom says that I am her reincarnated. She was a modern day size 14, so I grew up playing dress up in her clothes. That lifelong love of fashion turned into a business idea for others looking for size inclusive vintage finds. You had a full-time job, and mm -hmm. this was sort of a hobby of yours. How <laughs> did it grow into this? It was a way for me to hang out with friends. We would play dress up and take photos in my backyard. It started as one rack in my basement, and then I would say it turned into seven racks. 
Those racks reminded her of a personal experience. I had to shop in the women's section where my friends were shopping in the juniors section. I mean, my biggest memory is when I was bought mitzvahed when I was 13 and I couldn't find a dress that fit. And I so vividly remember crying in the dressing room. My mom still to this day talks about that because it was such a moment for the both of us. Emma wanted to fill that void in the vintage marketplace for women sizes 12 and up. So she started scouring thrift stores to resell on Instagram. How did you get from that point where you're like, okay, I'm gonna quit my job and I'm going to focus on this full time? My mom, who's an entrepreneur herself, she was like, you know what, Emma, I believe in you, you can do this. So she quit her full-time job at a criminal justice nonprofit and opened Berries, a thrift by appointment only studio in Brooklyn, New York. It can be really intimidating to come in here and not know your size. So I'm a size 16, but in vintage I wear a size 20. I mean, every time people come in here, they're like, holy cow, I have never found so much stuff in my size. Emma guides her customers through the store, helping them choose the right styles and encouraging folks to try pieces outside their comfort zone. And she prides herself on always being honest. If something doesn't look good, I will tell you. Oh, that's I, good. I, I that's promise. Rare. <laughs> As a plus size person myself, mm -hmm. I want to be told the truth. You know of what course. I mean? It's so hard for us to shop. She now works with thrift scouts across the country to find rare items while also supporting emerging designers. This rack is our collab rack. Oh. They're these oh button downs that I source and then I sent them to Lars Kemp, who's a designer in Oregon. And um, she added these little panels. Oh, I mean, it's really just cute. enough sexy, exactly. but you're still reserved. Exactly. <laughs> and talk to me about your skirt. So this skirt is made by a local designer, Duality Junkie, and it's actually made out of boxer shorts. <laughs> <laughs> Used boxer shorts? <laughs> oh, I sure hope not. Berries is full of bold patterns and playful cutouts, vintage silk shirts, lacy tees, and even some collectibles. I don't know if you remember in the 90s, Nicole Miller yes. was making these amazing silk shirts. And some of them are just so funny and random. <laughs> Look at this. While Emma is still selling her garments online, customers now travel, sometimes internationally, to get one-on-one -on -one time at the store. What are your customers? say to you? I mean, they must feel so seen. Yeah, I mean, I just had a customer on Saturday come all the way from Toronto. Mm. They were like, I've been following you for years. Your studio was the destination for our trip. There's no better feeling for me to see someone feel good about themselves and what they wear. Since our story first aired, the business has expanded. And keep an eye on their Instagram page because Barry's hosts events and pop-ups. What a great idea. Yeah. yeah. What a great and idea. And great finds, too. It's awesome. Speaking of great ideas, here's another one. From fashion to a futuristic sport, hand to controller, robot combat. That's right. <laughs> I recently learned all about the National Havoc Robot League and find out, I found out what it takes to compete. Fight, robots, fight. The biggest thing is just showing up and competing. Even if that's with a wooden bot, you know, um, Lego bot, <laughs> compete. It wasn't too long ago that Johnny Supus was building his own Lego robots, but his more recent projects require a bit more engineering. What goes into making one of these bots? If you're designing it on the computer, that can take months. And then once usually you feel confident with the look of it, you spend a couple of days assembling it, wiring it. Robot battling isn't the only thing Johnny juggles. This hobby, along with school, windsurfing, and guitar playing means Johnny's plate is full. How does a 16-year-old kid from the Bahamas get into this? Battle bus on TV. I was instantly captivated by these robots that were fighting. Oh! It was the craziest thing for third grade me to watch. Johnny jumped into the iSport with his robot Spartan competing for the first time in 2021 through the National Havoc Robot League. My biggest win was in that cage over probably the greatest robot of all time, Lynx. He had like some electrical issue in the middle of the fight, which stopped his weapon. And I was able to like, I don't know, 
capitalize quickly. We got really lucky. What an upset that for Spud! Also known as NHRL, the league runs some of the world's like most competitive it's combat it's robot it's battles. Oh, and Twister is already on its head. Started by a Connecticut native and entrepreneur Austin McCord, builders get to fight the remote-controlled robots head-to-head -head in the arena. Look at that gouge! But winning isn't the only upside. It's all love between both these teams. For some competitors like veteran Lucy Du, community is sometimes more important than the battle itself. If somebody is struggling, needs an extra part, they forgot to bring a spare, everybody's really helpful and they like crawl over each other just to help each other. But Lucy doesn't need that much help. The MIT PhD student, who's also the captain of Team Valkyrie, and the regular on BattleBots knows a thing or two about slicing through the competition, having won it all back in 2021 with her 12 pound robot, Hot Leaf Juice. I didn't really expect it to quite be the robust machine that it ended up being. This year, she's back on the scene driving a 30 pound team bot. Tell me about uh, Kablooey here. Oh, excuse me, Kablooey Tango. This weapon type is called an undercutter which is a big horizontal spinner, so it spins this way really fast. And it cuts at the bottom of people's robots. How fast does it spin? This one, I believe, is about 200, 300 miles per hour at the tip speed. Wow, these hits are insane. All this talk made me want to get in on the action, but I needed some backup, so I brought in the man who started the league. You don't charge an entry fee. Not to fight, no. Why not? because we want to make it as easy as possible for people to come fight. You want to come watch, we'll charge you. That's what we're really out to encourage is to get people to be more creative, to put down the iPad, stop watching TV, and actually make something. After some practice. John, are you ready? Always. It was time for robots Melvin and Roker to face off. Three, two, one. Weapons on. Come on, Johnny. I'm a beginner. I'm tapping out. You ripped that uh, oh. that metal piece and you ripped into my, my top plate there. Okay, yeah. you had some success. Yeah. You won damage. You some damage. But as is the case in real life, Roker wins again. So we're, we're in the uh, NHRL off season. Okay. Uh, well, they got to right rest now. their gears. Got to rest, <laughs> gotta rest the gears. Uh, but plans are in the works for next season. So keep an eye out. But it really is a great way for kids to really learn about math, That's about right. science, mm -hmm. and how to apply those things. Like it's STEM learning. with fun. There you yeah, go. Exactly. I love that. Well, coming up, it's She Made It, the inspiration behind a big business that's all about embracing the small things. Then later, we're going to turn yesterday's turkey into today's lunch, in today's food. Third hour of your day, I'll be right back. It's time now for She Made It and proof that good things can come in small packages. Today, lifestyle and commerce contributor Jill Martin Brooks recently introduced us to the mom behind Super Smalls. 
I always wear lots of jewelry, I love to dress up. And it was my then five-year-old daughter, Luna, who said to me, Mommy, I'll stop stealing your things if you find me something that's as beautiful as what you have. And I went and I looked and I couldn't find it. So I decided to create it. Maria Duenas Jacobs is the founder and chief creative officer of Super Smalls, an accessories brand for kids and kids at heart. When you were little, did you play dress up and you would put everything on all at once? I was born in Madrid. My mother is an artist. My father's an entrepreneur. Crafted as a little kid, dressed up. Halloween is still my favorite holiday. After high school, Maria moved to New York City to attend the Fashion Institute of Technology. You were very entrepreneurial when you started and did not take no for an answer. I was trying to piece it, piece it together and figure out what I wanted to do. I studied fashion magazines like textbooks, and I had seen that stylists and makeup artists and hairstylists all were represented. And I called up the agents and I said, hi, I'm Maria and I'm an assistant stylist and I have more time. Give me the call that you would make to these agencies. I would say, you know, hi, Sally, my name is Maria. Uh, I'm an assistant stylist and I happen to have Tuesdays, Thursdays and Fridays available. And Mondays and Saturdays yeah. and Sundays. <laughs> Any day. <laughs> and I would get a phone call. And then from there, I also finagled my way into figuring out how to be a dresser behind the scenes at fashion shows, which was a dream come true. Upon graduation, Maria got a job as an assistant to a stylist at Glamour Magazine, working her way up to accessories editor. Then Elle Magazine came calling. And when you were three months pregnant, you went on an interview. I didn't plan to interview at three months. That is when Elle came to me. The fashion director then, um, Samira Nasser, was incredible. And I said to her, I really want this opportunity. I really know that I'm going to be amazing at it, but I, I need to let you know that I'm three months pregnant. She did not hesitate, and she said, congratulations, when can you start? Maria worked at Elle for four years. I was surrounded by, you know, the craziest, most beautiful fashion, all sorts of designers and jewelry was able to travel to Milan and Paris, really just living this like dream job. And while I was there, I had three daughters also. <laughs> Her daughters were the inspiration behind Super Smalls, which Maria launched direct to consumer in 2019. It's a line of accessory and activity sets that embody a fine jewelry collection, but encourage imagination and play. I very much believe in luck and creating my own luck, which is why I'm wearing this four leaf clover. And we, I launched Super Smalls on November 11th, so 11-11, and our first Instagram post was at 11-11. It completely went bananas. It sold out in five days. Today, Super Smalls is carried by Nordstrom, Saks, and Bergdorf's, and even made Oprah's favorite things two years in a row. So are your kids your models now? They must be decked out. They, they wear multiple pieces of jewelry to school and then sometimes they'll come back with less. And they're so proud of it that they give it, they give it away. Right. And I had to explain to them, that's not how you run a business. Right. You want. So now they've learned. So what advice would you have for other people in your position who are afraid to make the move from something consistent to something that is definitely not consistent and has challenges? Yeah, I, I think Similar to what I did, you don't have to do it from one day to another. You do it little by little. Make sure that it's something that you are really, really passionate about because it's going to take a humongous part of your life. And if, if you answer yes, 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 I got all those things, then, then take the leap and believe in yourself. So cute, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah great cool. idea. Jill, thank you so much. And this year, Super Smalls launched a holiday collection with both Christmas and Hanukkah activities, ornaments, and more. All right, happy holidays. Well, coming up, the perfect day after Thanksgiving lunch, we're going to show you a delicious way to use that leftover turkey. Third Hour Today will be right back.
We are back with Today Food. There's a good chance you've got a lot of leftover turkey. So this morning, we're going to show you how to use it to make lunch. Food entrepreneur and author Rachel, Rachel Mansfield has earned a loyal social media following with her delicious recipes. She's going to show us how to make a turkey Waldorf salad that you're going to want to gobble up. Rachel? Hi, friends. Welcome to our kitchen for our post-Thanksgiving lunch. Now today we're gonna to be making my turkey Waldorf salad. This is one of my family's favorites to have for the day after Thanksgiving. So you can use white meat or dark meat for this, which I love. I like adding the turkey to my stand mixer. It shreds it perfectly, absolutely love that. First, you're gonna take the shredded turkey, dump it into a large bowl. Now I love the mix-ins in this salad. We're gonna use Granny Smith apple. You can also use a Fuji apple if you prefer. Some red grapes. My kids love grapes, so they love this. Some chopped pecans, or you can use walnuts. Then we have some celery we're gonna add to this. So we have all of the mix-ins in the large bowl. Mix it on up. I like the turkey to be in a super fine consistency and shredded similar to like when you have tuna salad. Now we're gonna make the dressing. So you're gonna need about a third cup of Greek yogurt or sour cream. I like using the yogurt because it also adds more protein to this too. Then a third cup of mayonnaise. This is an avocado oil mayo too, which is delicious. And some Dijon mustard, about two teaspoons. I'm a big Dijon girly, so the more the better. Then you're gonna to wanna to add some salt and a little pepper. And then mix this right up. And you want it to just be like evenly combined. So once it's smooth, creamy, and combined, you're gonna add it right into the bowl of turkey. But something that you can even like batch cook or prep earlier in the week and have for like a quick and easy lunch throughout the week, not just the day after Thanksgiving. This is the consistency that you're looking for. This is actually like the perfect ratio of dressing to turkey right now. I'm very excited. Now when it comes to serving this, you can either serve it over a salad. So I have a bed of lettuce here, or you can turn it into a sandwich. So this is a sourdough bread that I'm going to be using to make the sandwich. Any bread you want is fine. Hot tip, use like a cookie dough scooper, ice cream scooper, it gives it like that perfect scoop that you're looking for. And then add it right on top of the bread. It looks absolutely amazing. Thank you guys so much for coming to our kitchen today. I hope you tried this recipe and have a wonderful rest of your holiday season. Good. A good turkey oh, yeah. salad yes. is always nice. A little cranberry in there. Love it. Sign me up. <laughs> All right. For this recipe and more, head to today.com slash food. And we'll be right back on the third hour of today. Monday on the third hour of today, Nora Jones and Leve performing live in Studio 1A. Hoda and Jenner are coming up next. Enjoy your Friday and have a fantastic weekend, everyone. <laughs> 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 Good morning, everybody. Here's what's happening in your neck of the woods. Oh, 
You deserve to be celebrated. Way to go, Reynolds. Oh, Al. Al, you're all of our heroes. Yeah. Y'all love Al Roker. <laughs>
going to say, like, by potato salad. Like, I didn't know what that was. She's just saying, <laughs> go to Whole Foods and have them cook Thanksgiving lunch no, for you. No. It's something I do almost every year. So I appreciate that. I like I like that she is a woman of the people. Yeah. She knows that we're not really going to mash we're the not, potatoes. We're not peeling and we're not boiling. And the mashing. strangest thing is, as a child, the carbohydrate dishes, the stuffing, yeah, the mashed so potatoes, good. it's where I spent most of my time yeah, that's the on best, Thanksgiving. That's the best part. My yeah. children do not <gasps> like mashed potatoes. Why? I don't understand What about it. stuffing? They like it okay. They're, it's on the fence. It's They're not, not their into favorite. it. They like turkey? No. They don't even like Thanksgiving. No, they don't. They never liked it. They don't. All right. So Dolly Parton just dropped a deluxe version of her latest album. It's called Rockstar. And it's got two additional tracks that we are revealing. What are the two additional tracks? Well, okay, in a recent interview, she revealed that she sent a love you note to Paul McCartney and Ringo Starr asking them to collaborate with her on Let It Be. She didn't she Let didn't It ask, Be is on, the fir- is on the first. Don't. Don't <laughs> with your details. Uh, just you and your details always get on my nerves. <laughs> it's on the first. It's on the first release. Okay. But anyway, how did she get this? She wrote a letter. She didn't ask her agent to call their agent. She didn't even call them on the phone. She wrote a letter, a love letter. So sweet. She said this, I didn't want to put you on the spot, but I'd love to have you sing with me on my rock album. And if you're interested, call me. This is my number. She doesn't have a cell phone. Everybody says of Dolly Parton. I know, so how'd she She call her? She has a landline. Oh, at her kitchen. Maybe she was waiting by her landline. (laughs) I love that. I love that too, and they said yes. And you know what I love about her? Because when you ask someone in person, or even on the phone, you are putting them on the spot. You are. Because would you like to? And I totally get it if you don't want no, to. No, I know. It doesn't matter. I know. But if you write the letter, they if they if the answer is yes, they will, and, or no, but they will call you yes. and have a minute to think about no, it. No, I agree. Sometimes, yes. and I hate to say that because the best way to ask something is to straight up ask and it. And be in person, but yes. it's true. Don't you sometimes prefer yes. to get just a text email. or an email? <laughs> so then you can think about yeah. the answer and it instead gives you space. of, because usually you say yes in person yes. when you don't. Think you I mean know. It. So it also means it's effect- effective just to go ahead and ask But a handwritten it. letter does show that there was a little extra thought and care put into it. I think right? it's super sweet. Okay. Um, okay. Okay. So let's talk about grandparents' names. Now, we know your grandparents' nicknames, Ganny and Gampy. That's right. I love that. And I love this picture. This is one of my favorite pictures. It's, you know, I just love it because everyone's way, just hanging around. zoom in, that's Teddy Rubskin. That's my Teddy Rubskin on my grandmother's lap. And then Teddy had a friend. I can't remember the friend's name. But I think Wait, you remember that pillow? What are you talking yeah, about? Yeah, it's actually, that's the back of Teddy Rubskin's head. Okay, okay, all right. <laughs> and then Teddy had a friend. Oh, I, I see. I, I see. can't remember the friend's name, yeah. but I believe it was a giraffe. Does okay. this ring any bells to people? Okay, Teddy had a, a giraffe friend. <laughs> and there we And are. that's the giraffe. Um, and you're paying attention to the giraffe. I guess so. Barbara yeah. stole Teddy Rubskin right from my hands. <laughs> all right. Um, okay. How did you guys come up with that? That Danny they, Gippy. I think. They did? They did. They did. Right. I can't remember. Right. Because I was zero. <laughs> but what did you call your grandparents? Grandma. Grandma and grandpa. That's oh, I what we like that. Them. And my daughter calls, uh, my daughters call my mom Teta, which is grandma in Arabic. So they call her Teta. Oh, don't you yep. love, love that? It. Did love she, it. who came up with that? That's just what the word is. <laughs> no, I understand. <laughs> but you could have called her Mimi or Mima. Grandma. If you're from New Orleans. Mima. You could have called Mima. her Gra- Grammy. Grammy. Which I called my grandmother, Jenna. Grammy. Grammy. Oh, Grammy. That's cute. But you decided Teta. on Teta. Do you remember who remembered I think, that? No, I don't remember. <laughs> I think we just did. <laughs> Thanks for all that. Uh, Well, the Wall Street (laughs) Journal recently had an article on grandparent names, and it said, my child had a child, but don't call me grandma. Gosh, it's very edgy, the journal, Wall Street Journal. Getting edgier, don't you think? They just have taken, like, what's wrong with grandma? You Um, called your grandma grandma? I don't know. I'm not sure. Does that make someone feel old? I don't know. I don't I mean, know. Here's the remember, truth. You're glam- holding your- remember Glamma, Glamorous Ma, Glamma. That's remember? so <laughs> weird. Um, my kids call my dad Hefe, which oh, means yeah, boss in I Spanish. I love that. I love that. Which is really that's cute. That's my favorite. And my mom, Grammy. Oh, that's cute. Because it was what her mom was. Sometimes Aww, that Grammy passes. Like, you Hefe. might be Teta just because your mom was Teta. I could be. Who knows? I don't We've know got a long at this time. point. <laughs> All right. The holidays are the perfect time to re- reunite with somebody you love. So if you're missing somebody and you want to surprise them, we would love to help you out. So tell us about it. Yeah. Come on. A reunion. A holiday reunion. It's just like love, actually. All you have to do is head to hodaandjenna.com and click 
the Connect button. It's our knock knock surprise. So we may be surprising someone. So if you'd like to surprise somebody, go to our website. Let's do it. Okay. Coming up, y'all, we've got a little game in honor of Jenna's birthday this weekend. Oh, I can't wait. You're going to like it. Right after this. Welcome to today. So happy to see you guys. Would you like my boost? Yes. Back, here we go. Sometimes we just do things to help. And that's our Hoda. <laughs> happy birthday. We got an awesome crowd, y'all. This is a game we love in honor of Jenna's birthday. Tomorrow, <laughs> we are going to play a game called Older or Younger. So our producers have prepped a few items. <laughs> items. And wow. we need to guess if Jenna, you are older or are younger than the item. First up, we know you love to read. So the TV series Reading Rainbow, are you older or younger than Reading Rainbow? I watched Reading Rainbow when I was a child. So therefore, so am I, you might be, you I might might be younger. I might be older, right? Because I might have started it. You I'm say, I'm, okay, wait, no, I'm younger. Uh, okay, Jenna is older than Reading Rainbow. <laughs> Hosted by LeVar Burton, it first premiered on June 6, 1983. So it had all, you So that's right. I was two okay. when it started, and that makes total sense. Okay, next. I love Don't LeVar scroll Burton, up, because no. we don't want to reveal, because Jenna might peek. Uh, up next, are you older or younger than Cabbage Patch Kids? Easy. I am older. Uh, is she older? <laughs> You're yeah. older. Congratulations. They were first produced in 1982. Not by much. No, and that's actually, I meant to say younger. I'm confused, but okay. <laughs> You're older than Cabbage Patch Kids. Next up, are you older or younger than my favorite song, The Rose by Bette Midler? What do you Some think? Some say <laughs> it is a flower. Well, okay. Did it, you, girl. What do you think? You better be younger than The Rose. Okay. <laughs> younger, am I younger? You gotta be. Gotta be. Yes, of course. You are. Oh, just by you. a year. Just by a year. Not even a full year because it's more Wow, that ten. song is really held up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, okay. next up. Are you older than younger than Chicken McNuggets? Come on, JB. Okay, I'm definitely younger. You think you're younger than I think than they Chicken were Mc around in the 70s. Do you really? Jenna is older than Chicken McNuggets. Sorry, you're talking about the Big Mac. The Chicken <laughs> McNuggets were introduced later in 1980. Wait, I am older than a Chicken McNugget? <laughs> I was feeling good about my age, but all of a sudden I'm a little... <laughs> Are you older or younger than Michael Jackson's moonwalk? Okay, I think he moonwalked after me, so that means I'm older. So is she older than that, too? Yes, indeed. <laughs> you are older. He first performed it in public on March 25th, 1983, during the television special Motown 25. Does that just mean that Motown was 25 years old? No. Yes? It yes? Is. God, I'm old! <laughs> no, you're not. Oh, this is gonna be the clincher. And Jenna, there's a lot of pressure on this one because <laughs> this is this is hit you where you live. Are you older or younger than Velveeta cheese? Oh y'all, Velveeta has had to be around. It before better be. Me. If so you are I old, am you're I am younger. You she's gotta be younger than Velveeta. Velveeta. Yes, yes, you are. 1918. You were set you were uh, wait. <laughs> wait. It, it was in it was a way to conserve waste from broken cheese wheels. They took they took the rinds and put them in a vat and made Velveeta. And Velveeta lasts for a really long time. All right, Jenna, All we right. got a little birthday love for Jenna Bush Hager. Oh, thank you guys. Oh, <laughs> yes. And not only, 
it's not just a birthday cake. It's not just a birthday cake, if you're wondering. It is a birthday Hollywood cast. Hager. Yeah, we couldn't book actual Hollywood Hager, so here's right, Hollywood's the available. By the way, what a beautiful cake. That is so we sweet. Love we love you. Donna, did yeah. you make this? No, no, Look at no. Look tail. Definitely yeah. not. I could barely Yo, cut this, what? to be honest. I really do have a brand, which I've realized what is it's cats, cats queso, tacos. Queso, yeah, queso and tacos. Cats. Queso cats and, and yeah, cats and queso. Cats is that and queso. something I should be proud of? Yes. <laughs> Donna, love you. We love Thank you. Thank you guys. Happy love birthday. you. Oh, that was fun. <laughs> All right, okay. coming up, fashion guru and Real Housewife Jenna Lyons yeah. is here. She's dishing on the new Real Housewives reunion, motherhood and a new love. Right after this. is a fashion powerhouse turned Bravo Liberty. Jenna Lyons is the former president of J. Crew, founder of the beauty brand Love Scene, and she's fresh off the newest season of The Real Housewives of New York. Jenna, I bet that last part <laughs> still is a little yeah. like... Uh, it's an out-of-body experience when people say that. I'm like, are you talking about I me? heard you kind of gasp a when you yeah. first said it. Yeah, bravo it still, it still feels like a disconnect because I think I spent so much of my life building a career, and now that's the thing that everyone is hanging Let, on. Well, let's yeah. talk about that for a second because you are so established. You took J. Crew from like a brand that, that was a certain way and you elevated it. You've done so many things in your career. People knew you way before this Bravo show. So how does it feel to now kind of be identified with uh, with this? I mean, I feel like I'm struggling a little bit to be like, oh, but what about this? So you know I did yeah. this. And I think there's a little bit of me trying to kind of remind people that I had a whole life prior to this. And I had, you know, it's different. I used to get stopped on the street for accomplishments and now I get stopped on the street for television because I'm a TV star and that's weird. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Very strange. Yeah. <laughs> and people really feel like they know you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which I'm sure you know. Well, I mean, as Hoda said, you had this incredible career, mm -hmm. but I do think it's like how you define yourself. Mm -hmm. How trying. do you define yourself? Mm -hmm. I mean, I think what I'm trying to re remember is like, I'm not just one thing. Yeah. I think that I have had this incredible experience. I'm so grateful, but I also don't want the idea of a housewife to just be everything I am. That's not the summation of who I am. So yeah. I have to kind of keep reminding myself yeah. as well as other people. I yeah. feel like a lot of people when they're in a group of girls conform to what the other girls are doing or saying or acting. It sort of becomes the way sometimes it works. Yeah. But as you showed in the reunion, you were going to dress the way you wanted to dress. All these girls glam up in designer stuff. And <laughs> look you at look, this. by the way, you in your cool jeans. And I have to say, you are a trendsetter. <laughs> um, you do your thing. Tell me about what went into the decision to say, this is you being you, which is what you're talking I mean, about. It's interesting because I didn't expect this to have such a, a shockwave. Yeah. Um, and I was really surprised both on the side of people loving it and supporting it and people being like, how could you do that? That's not allowed. And I was like, <laughs> by who? Who? who where's yeah. the rule book? Yeah. I, I was not given. I also like I didn't plan my outfit. I took a bunch of stuff with me. And the morning yeah. of in the dressing room, I was like, I'm just going to wear jeans. Like they were all so glammed up. And I was like, I can't. It's not who I am. Yes. Yeah. So I don't need to like wear. match that. I don't. And also like no one expects that's not why they wanted me. That's not you. I, yeah. yeah, there's plenty of other people already doing that. And I was like, I can do my own thing. I was just shocked. 
<laughs> at the response. Yeah. Well, I mean, what about the response in general? Because yeah. as I said, there were so many articles and so many beautiful comments about how you sort of broke the mold yeah. of what a reality star looks like. I I was surprised by that, and I don't. I think that's probably why they asked me to be a part of yeah. the show. Yeah. I don't think I showed up exactly as maybe what people might have expected. I think the side effect that has been amazing is the number of people who have said, like, thank you. It's so nice to see someone who reminds me of me or who isn't necessarily as polished and perfect in the uh, way, yes. or it doesn't present as polished and perfect. I don't think any of us are polished and perfect, but a lot of people present that way. Mm -hmm. You were the first openly gay a woman on The Housewives. And I think what you were just explaining, other women said, wow, I see myself here. This is now, it, you know, it's okay or, or yeah. whatever they saw on you. What kind of comments were you hearing from people? I mean, I think the thing that has come up the most is most the reason people hide being gay is because people around them are afraid for them. The people that love them are scared that they're not going to find a good job, they're not going to be mm -hmm. successful, they're not going to find love. And I understand that. So parents oftentimes in the community are the ones who are, are put the most pressure on the kids to yeah. be normal and fit in. And so for some of the parents to come to me and say, it's so good to see, yeah. like, know my kid can have a life and be successful and be okay and be out in the open, like, that's a, a really huge reward. Mm -hmm. And also for young kids to feel like it's so nice for me to see that see that yeah yeah out there and that's mm -hmm. i like i feel a lot of you are it. you're breaking molds and uh, you're a role model for a lot of people Thank now you. okay are you coming back uh, you you didn't go to bravo, you didn't Con. Go to bravo people Con. were freaking so out we're where wondering, is jenna we are wondering if you will yeah. be back for next yeah. season i'm wondering too <laughs> so how come you how do you weigh to, that how come you didn't go to bravo Con? Huh? what was that um about? it was there was a lot of combinations of things mostly i just had a lot going on yeah. and it was a you know you had to fly to, to las vegas. vegas it's also i don't that is a lot of attention in a very intense way with fans. And in the end, I don't know if that was like for you. Maybe not for me. Yeah. Yeah. Now, so you're mm -hmm. weighing the decision. Yes. What goes into it? I mean, I think it is, you know, I did it for a reason. I have a business and I wanted to support that business. And it's had a much bigger halo than I ever expected, yeah. as we just spoke yeah. about, like the impact it's had for other people. And so I feel a lot of pride around that. But I also, I'm in a relationship now, and I have to take that into consideration, how that impacts um. not just me, but the people around me. Mm -hmm. So I have some thinking to do. There she is. You, there have, she you, is. Had, you had a crush, you said. Oh, you told us you had a real. crush the last time you were yes. here. Yes, and now we see her. And so we're sweet. very happy mm -hmm. for you. And your son was a part of it a little. He was. How'd mm -hmm. he feel? He is proud of me and wants me to be out in the world. You know, mm -hmm. when I was not oh, working. Oh, sweet. He's the cutest. Look at him. Super oh. sweet. When I was not working, I thought that he would be so happy that I was hanging out at yeah. home. And as soon as I started working, he all of a sudden, like, perked up. And I was like, I thought you would want like, me to be hanging at home. And he's like, Mom, I like seeing you happy and engaged in the world. And I was like, oh, my gosh. Noted. Oh my what gosh. a mature Empathetic kid. And lovely. All right. You've got a couple of must-haves yes, that you say Shall we, we should have. Can yes, we go let's peek? Talk, let's talk. Okay. Let's okay. do it. So I am a shopper, and I like to give gifts. As um, Oh, yeah. We know. And some people like to get them, and some people don't. Uh-huh. <laughs> as we know from and the I'm show. Not, those people who don't will mean name, uh, name <laughs> side. Okay. <laughs> All right, so okay. this is your... So this is the Hinoki body oil. This is by a brand called Wonder Valley. Um, mm. They are a small, mm -hmm. young, upstart mm, brand started day. by a young couple. Sm yeah. Beautiful. The smell is incredible. But smells I, like a, a spa. It is. And mm. what I love about this is it's a great, especially during the summertime when you have a little bit of color, mm -hmm. you don't want to look oily and like yeah. very slick. Mm -hmm. It's perfect. And mm -hmm. this is between the smell and the feeling, I love okay. it. Okay, what is this? This is Fleur de Mal. So I don't know if you watched Heard. the show, but I gave all the girls la bronzerie. Yeah. Uh, How'd they feel about Jessel that? did not... <laughs> feel good about that. But okay. this is one of my favorite brands for them all. The quality is incredible and they fit, the fit is beautiful. This is the one I wear because I have no, mm -hmm. <laughs> not really endowed with anything. Yeah. So this is a great one. And if you have something to wear, this is a great one too. Yes. And it's good. It's got a good, a real plunge. So if you like to Can wear it and wear things low like me. Yes. yes. And then this is my favorite robe ever. This is from mm -hmm. a company called, um, Marfa, the, sorry. Oh, is it from Marfa? It Texas? comes out of Marfa, so my friend Liz Lambert has a I know Liz called... Lambert. I was just with her. What? I love Liz Lambert. I love she's, she's a Texan. Of, she's one of my oh dearest. Oh, my God. She's one of my dearest. My, no, she's mine. No, she's my You're dearest. Fight, mine. You're going to have to fight over I Liz Lambert. I was just with her at St. Vincent. No way. And oh, this is um, Cosmico? This, so this is from El Cosmico. And yeah. when I stayed there, when you go stay there, they give you one of these robes, and it's my favorite. I give Liz it to everyone. Lambert. Let's Liz fight Lambert. over Liz Lambert. We love you, Liz. All right. Thank you so much. Thanks, Jenna. And we should mention that Jenna receives a revenue share from these items on her website. You can watch all the episodes of the new era of The Real Housewives of New York on NBC's streaming service, Peacock. Thank you, Jenna. All right, coming up, fun games and prizes. Donna hits the streets for some holiday trivia coming up right after this.
everybody. Good morning. Welcome to today. What's shaking eggs and bacon? Hold what? on. I'm just going to say it. What? Badass. Oh, thank you. So do you think you'll act forever? <laughs> Boom. <laughs> We're going to have lots of fun yeah. this morning. Yeah. Okay, there is nobody, and we mean nobody, <laughs> who loves to spread holiday cheer more than our girl Donna. She really loves it. So we sent our in-house elf out to the streets of New York for a fun holiday trivia what game. Happened? I love being your in-house yeah, elf. You are always. Are. Well, as is evident, I, of course, love getting into the holiday spirit and really love handing out prizes. So I hit the heart of Midtown to see who was up for the challenge. <laughs> cheer. The shoppers are out and I'm going to lighten their load by asking some holiday trivia questions and give them a gift card if they're right. Let's go. On the first day of Christmas, my true love what hilarious me. actors entering the Christmas movie canon this year with his new film, Candy Cane Lane? A. Eddie Murphy, B. Will Ferrell, or C. Arnold Schwarzenegger? Oh, uh, Eddie Murphy? Yeah. <laughs> Eddie Murphy! Can I do a little jog with you and ask you a trivia question for the Today Show? Okay. Mariah Carey's All I Want for Christmas Is You is the biggest selling holiday song of all time by a female artist. True. How did, yes, that's true. <laughs> How did Mariah announce it's officially Christmas time this year? Did she bust out of a block of ice, slide down the chimney, or cut down a Christmas tree? Bust out of ice? Yeah, she busted Woo! out of ice. And guess what? Thank you for running with me you get a hundred dollar gift card. Woo! In the classic Christmas movie Home Alone, what is the name of Macaulay Culkin's character? Ah! Is it A, Carl, B, Kevin, or C, Kenneth? Can you yell it? Kevin! <laughs> yes, you got it! And here, for mom, <laughs> is the gift. Gift card! Oh, thank you! Yay! I hold a whip from the wall in. What iconic singer put out her first Christmas album ever this year? Featuring the single, DJ Play a Christmas Song. Okay. Cher, Madonna, or Barbra Streisand? Cher? Yes! <laughs> I love gifts, yes. Happy, Happy holidays! What color is the day after Thanksgiving often referred to as? A, Red Friday, B, Green Friday, or C, Black Friday? Black. You knew it! I'm gonna give you guys a hundred dollar gift card. Oh, thank you. So you can enjoy Black Friday, right? In the song, 12 Days of Christmas, what gift was given on the sixth day? Is it A, Piper's Piping, B, Ladies Dancing, C, Geese laying <laughs> Six Geese a laying Yeah, Jane, you got it right! Six geese a lay and four calling birds three friends. What recently reunited boy band sings the holiday classic Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays? A. Backstreet Boys, B. In Sync, or C. Boys to Men? In Sync. You knew it immediately. <laughs> I'm giving you a hundred dollar gift card. Really? Yes. My work spreading cheer is done. Until next time. Oh, I love seeing all those smiles. Was it fun, Isn't Donna? It so fun. I love it. And I'm going to continue to spread the holiday cheer for you guys. Of course really you are. are. I told you I saw <laughs> Donna in the lobby at like 5.45 videotaping a band. I love Don everything about this <laughs> she, season. Donna is delighted. Tis She's delighted. Season. delighted. Delighted from all the right. time her eyes open. Coming up next, from knee high to combat, the hottest winter boots to buy. Coming up right after this.
Good morning, everybody. Here's what's happening in your neck of the woods. What? You deserve to be celebrated. Way to go, Reynolds. Oh, Al. Al, you're all of our heroes. Yeah. Y'all love Al Roker. Time to step out in style. That is right. Style expert Melissa Garcia is here with the season's hottest winter. Boots. Hi, Melissa. Hi. All morning, right. Uh, Let's first talk of all, utility we, yes, every day. All terrain. Take us. <laughs> all girl. terrain. So what I love actually about all the boots today is that they're all really wearable. They're trends, but they're pieces that you can really wear. Right. Like Comfy. they're not too trendy. Yeah. So all terrain. We were just talking a great winter boot. These are actually not only on trend, but they're really practical. We're yeah. heading into winter, rain, sleet, snow. So these are a great sort of all-terrain boot. Waterproof? They, most of them are waterproof mm -hmm. or water resistant. They have that lug sole with yeah, that like, like toothy that. rubber bottom. I like so they that. really are grippy. They have the grommet detail. Mm -hmm. I've seen these styled with everything from jeans to leggings, to even like maxi dresses. So oh, there's wow. really fun ways to wear okay. them. These are under 100 from Mark Fisher. Cool. So nice. Right? I love Mark Fisher. Now tell me yeah. about these. So if these you're... are fun. So remember the whole quiet luxury trend mm -hmm. that we were hearing about? So this is sort of a play you told off us that. About it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so this is like a really wearable, sleek, modern kit heel booty. I mm -hmm. love that the heel is short so it's really wearable mm -hmm. and comfortable, really modern, no frills, like easy to wear. I love this with like a nice big oversized wool trouser would be yeah, really, yeah, pretty. really pretty. These are from Ann Taylor. Tons of different, different colors. colors. All right. So if you want a thicker heel, a higher These boot, are more I knee love high. these. Yeah. So knee high is another trend we're seeing. And I say trend, I like but they're like classic knee high. Yeah. Never, They'll never go Exactly. So if you're going to splurge on a pair of boots, I would say splurge on something like this, because like you said, these are never going out of style. So these are great. They're so beautiful, sleek, mm. comfortable. They have a nice high heel, but it's like you were saying, Hoda, a block heel, so it makes like a block it heel. a little more comfortable. Yeah, Walking yeah, around a around. stiletto all day, you can't really do. Well, also, you don't want to sink into the ground. Yes. It happens to the best of us. <laughs> yes, it does. It happens to the best yes, of us. it does. Yeah, so these are great. These are from Nordstrom's. They come in also a beautiful ivory color as well. I like a white Me too. Me too. And these are great for the winter and even the fall with a great maxi let's skirt, talk about a skirt. Let's talk about a combat, combat boot. I like these big old boots. <laughs> Me too. Yeah. So seriously, step outside New York and walk around for like two Two minutes and you'll see these everywhere. They're very, they're very in. Right they're very, now. especially like. Can you wear these with dresses? How would you yes. style them? So here's what I love. So they're very rough and tough, very masculine. So I love balancing them with something more feminine. So like a dress, really comfortable, wearable. I love it with something frilly, a floral, really fun and pretty. Or you can always do it with a jean or a faux leather legging or a regular legging. So there's so many different ways to wear them. These are tall, but you can get a shorter one as well yeah. if that's more comfortable for you. I find you. them hard to get on. <laughs> Do you? I mean, because you know what stretchy. I mean? Yeah. yeah. It's like a little hard to get Tight. on. I like the shorter ones. Yeah. Me too. The They're shorter cool. ones might be easier if they don't have mm -hmm. a zipper here, but mm -hmm. these are really stretchy, easy to get on. These are from Steve Madden, really comfortable, really um, cute. Now, the Texan in me is very excited about something, which Cow is that cowboy boots are back. Wait, they are? I don't think they ever went away. They, I, I don't think say, so either. I don't think they ever went away. We've been seeing a whole Western movement. Like you, I'm sure you guys have been Western talking about cowgirl. it. I mean, cowgirl, yes. coastal. Cowgirl, coastal, cowgirl, everything. Right. So we've seen <laughs> bright metallic cowboy boots. We've uh -huh. seen really fun colors. But I wanted to give you something, again, neutral that's wearable. I love a neutral. So these are so pretty. Those these are, are from, pretty on you. Aren't mm -hmm. they really Too pretty? Too bad they're a size six. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> well, I'm not a six either. What size are you? I'm a nine. I'm a ten. I'm You're a nine? Like yeah. I wouldn't think that. Well, what would you think I am? I wouldn't think, no, but I, I... I'm a 10, okay? <laughs> would you think that? I, w I actually wouldn't. I wouldn't think you're a 9 or a 10. I don't know. I feel like an 8. We're, we're, like you're we're tall. We have, we big, have large we have feet. Big feet. And we have big heads. We need to okay? be supported. <laughs> <laughs> well, these would be great if they were a 10. But, but these are really beautiful. They're from Aldo's. These are under $100, nice. which is a great price. Again, these are good with a dress. A short skirt would be cute with... Jeans. I mean, so many Cute. different ways to wear them. Cute. Wearable cowboy trend. What do you have on, Melissa? What do you have? What do you? I, I don't. I you have, have on a really super high, massive. I love it because uh, I love your platforms. Five foot one. Platform. Yeah, and you're also to... wearing winter white, and you look amazing. <laughs> Thank Thank you. As always. Thank All right, you. Melissa. Thank, Thank you. you Coming up, small business gift ideas for the holiday season. Right after this.
it's Black Friday, which means it's time to shop. That's right. And here with some wonderful small business gift ideas is the editor of editor of Real Simple, Lauren Iannotti. Hi, Hi Lauren. Lauren. How it's are complicated you? Complicated to say I Real know. Simple, right? Why is it hard? <laughs> real no. Simple it should be, be simple. simple. <laughs> okay, so let's get started because these are some awesome, awesome gifts on small on this small business. Yeah, uh, we love to sort of support a small business. Mm -hmm. These are all women-owned small businesses, oh, cool. so we're so excited to be here to support them. We'll get right into it. So. Okay. I love this. This is from Dar Leone, which is a Sierra Leonean American woman in London. Her name is Isatu Fornu, and Aww. she makes these gorgeous things, all inspired by West African textiles. So you know you've seen the big dresses and stuff. So she has transferred oh, that onto these beautiful, and they're scratch proof, and they're tough. You can give them as a hostess gift. By the they're way, great the texture is I know. awesome. Can you wash these in a dishwasher? Yeah. Uh, I think you probably want to hand, hand wash them. They're, they're beautiful. beautiful. Aren't they gorgeous? And they're I just love bright the and mugs, colorful. too. Yeah. They're these are gorgeous. really great holiday yeah. gifts. Okay, and she, let's... Ships, she ships across the country, so um, okay. Darlie Own. Um, I love this. Jewelry. Okay, tell us who these, this jeweler is. Okay, and so this, this is, is fab. from a company called Sunshine Tienda, which means sunshine shop. Who doesn't yeah. want to go to the sunshine shop, right? Looks cute on you, JBH. You I know, stuff. adorable. Like mm -hmm. um, two uh, twin sisters, identical twin sisters from Texas. Mm. I don't know if you know any twin sisters from Texas. Yes. These are other ones. Where are they from in <laughs> They're Texas? They're from Dallas. Oh, um, amazing. Yep, and they have created this company that um, they love traveling. They wanted yeah. to bring all the happy color from their travels home. It's beautiful, So right. they started working with artisans female artisans in the countries that they visited <gasps> and striking deals, fair trade deals to bring all, curate awesome. all this beautiful That's stuff brilliant. to bring that sunshine home. Aren't they beautiful? Oh, I love it. Sunshine I love Tienda. It. Every the Ernst it. sisters it's in Texas. So beautiful. sunny. I love it. Isn't right. it wonderful? How about, how about some toys? These are super cute. So I know we all think we have enough stuffies at home, but mm. I'm telling you, you don't yet because this is the stuff that you have to buy. Oh. These adorable little animals um, mm. are from a company called mm, the Elephant Project mm -hmm. and 100% <gasps> of proceeds Wow. are going to go to supporting the animals that you see. Don't so you elephants, big cats, or dogs. 100% of proceeds. That's okay? amazing. I know. this. Who started this? This, uh, this absolutely lovely woman named Chris. Christina McKean, yeah. mm -hmm. and I think she just must have the biggest heart in the world because she saw a need, and the money goes right to elephant, uh, orphan elephants, orphan elephants. How oh, amazing! I know, is right? That? And helping other elephants in rehab and other animals too. Okay, okay. Are these bath bombs. We love a bath bomb. Who doesn't everything? love a bath bomb? Does anybody? Who, who wants to do the honors? Who wants to do the honors? Shall I do it? It must be. Hoda must do it. Thank you. Um, children love them. Teens love them. Oh, You're going to get bath bombs. Look what's They're going to fizz. This company, though founded by a woman, uh -huh. Leisha uh, Pickering, mm -hmm. and supports women. It is all, they, they Give, uh, they give jobs to women who are post-incarceration, post-substance um, abuse, rebuilding their lives in Mississippi. They've created 400 jobs. 175 oh, women have been rehabbed through this. They have, they're, they're giving work. So you're supporting a women-owned business, and you're supporting all those wonderful, hardworking women that? in Mississippi. And by the way, this smells delicious. And, and the products beautiful. are gorgeous. Yep, natural so and beautiful. So they make all these boxes with yeah, this? Yeah, this is almost like an advent calendar. Yeah, and how cute is each, this? each one has a little prize inside, and this, this one has like a bunch of magnets that you can put on the tree on the front. It's all very clever and well done, and all so, so win, 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 because it supports women. All right, let's get to the food department. Right. So, um, Aishwarya Iyer started this company. It's Brightland Olive Oil. Mm. Uh, I don't know if you've heard of it, but it's so wonderful. It looks beautiful. Yes. The Gorgeous. packaging. Yeah. So, olive oil is kind of tricky, a tricky business. We don't always know what's in that bottle, yeah. right? And you have the, you know, uh, the que those questions that kind of loom over it. So, Aish, Aish wanted to start this company mm -hmm. to bring transparency to olive mm -hmm. oil. So she works only with small family farms in California. Mm -hmm. um, and mm. she has tasted the olives. Is it, is it good? You want to try some? Yum, yes, I should. Get in there. Um, and Love she, um, Me too. Yeah, I know. It's so good. And it's great for drizzling. This is your drizzling olive oil. It's a great hostess gift. Like everybody wouldn't in, cook with this. No, I think, you'd, I think you'd want to save it. And also, mm -hmm. you leave it on the counter. It's so pretty, right. you know? It's mm. a great hostess gift. Mm. And that's right. Like 10. Right? All right. Have Complex a coffee. flavors. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm. So this is Sarah Nguyen is a first generation Vietnamese entrepreneur. She started the first Vietnamese coffee company based in the United States. Um, it's called uh, Nguyen uh, Coffee Supply. Amazing. And we love Vietnamese coffee. This is a, a version. I, why don't we all try some? This is the version with the condensed, the condensed milk. milk in it. So it's sweetened and creamy, but you can also just cook it right up. Mm. Yummy. Mm. Yummy. Oh my straight. gosh. 
Isn't that yummy? It's delicious. Wouldn't you, so if you're staying over at somebody's oh house the holidays, bring gift. this, and everybody has coffee in the morning, but you're like having it then, but you're also Wait, leaving it behind. They have it in cans? And they have it in cans. They have it pre-made, too, if you need your hit that way. But I love this. You can buy these little bundles um, as a gift. And They're I think it's lovely a wonderful gifts. gift when you're staying Everything over Everything you brought was so good. Everything. Awesome. Lauren, thank it's you sunny. so much. Thank I you hope Lauren, you guys enjoy. You. We'll be back right after this. We're happy that you spent your day with us. Be sure our next week is a big week around here. We've got the lovely and talented Aww. Jennifer Gardner. Plus, we're catching up with Kathy and Paris Hilton. Superstar Sophia Carson and actor Charles Melton takes on a dramatic new role. Okay, you guys have a wonderful holiday weekend. Bye. Bye. Good morning. Welcome to today. Every day. We are adding to the star power in our studio. The biggest names only on today. See, we're coming in this early, right? Everybody, it's today. It's today. It's like I won the, the lottery. lottery. How do you feel at this age, this stage? Liberated. We're just getting started, folks. Anal stuff with a snap. <laughs> the boys are back in town. The boys are back in town. It's a miracle. It's a miracle. This has been fantastic. Everything and everyone you're talking about. Only on today. excited we're going to take a big bite out of our favorite fall fruits with the one the only the returning martha stewart hi oh, oh, so her. great to be here Andy Ninth. i can't well, believe it martha stewart's fruit desserts and we are so and excited the, to have you here in person the recipes are so good in this book and i've been baking every single one of them and they're delicious but i want to show you how to make apple pot pies yes can you imagine a riff on the chicken pot pie i love it but it's, it's sweet not savory it's sweet. right it's a can dessert. i ask you first though how's your leg did you my hurt, legs you all hurt better yourself? you had a surgery yeah my achilles yeah okay don't ever hurt your achilles please okay. yes but you're all good okay <laughs> yeah, i'm all good so the apples you need 12 to 13 gorgeous autumnal apples okay mm -hmm. and uh, we're using granny smith's and rome's uh peel them cut them into like six pieces mm -hmm. Add lemon juice yeah. to stop the discoloration and add flavor. Oh, okay. A third of a cup of sugar and a little bit of salt. Just mm -hmm. kosher quarter, salt. Yeah, kosher salt, three quarters of a teaspoon and allspice, which okay. adds a very nice flavor. Half a teaspoon. You can stir that up All some. Right. And then you saute half of them in a pan. Add two tablespoons of flour. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, a third of a cup of bourbon. Mm -hmm. 
That's good. That's <laughs> He's good. Like, wow. Yeah, well, you, a little bit more won't hurt. And you cook <laughs> that up until it thickens just slightly. Mm -hmm. And then add this. I guess it's cooking. Yeah. Is it hot? It's yeah. cooking. Yeah, it's a little too. So you want it to get it like a thickened up sauce well, kind it'll, of. It'll, the, it'll thicken up in yeah. the oven. Will it absorb too. that ultimately? Uh, oh, yeah. Ultimately, okay. it will absorb it. You add that to your other apples. Mm -hmm. This is half and a half of the apples. Mm -hmm. Can and I stop then, Okay. Off. Mm -hmm. And then these stir all together. Ooh, yum. Oh Spoon them into. <laughs> oh, stop it. <laughs> He just added more. Spoon Boom. those into a pot pie dish. Oh, that's cute. See this cute, and this okay. is one no, no, no. serving. So uh, you didn't put the pastry under, I noticed. Uh, no, no, no. Pot pies always have the pastry on. <laughs> top. Oh, that's right. That's right. You no. Know? So here's a square of puff pastry, just like that. Can you pre-buy that or? It's store oh, yeah, yeah. It's a store, but you can buy it. They, there's very good home uh, frozen frozen puff. Make a vent hole in the top or two, mm -hmm. and put easy. that like that, and then egg wash. Just a uh, wow, softly eggs. beaten egg. Yeah, the beautiful color, beautiful. isn't it? Uh, these are farm eggs. Really, really great. Mm. Why do these things sit in water? I see water sometimes in these well, pans. Oh, no, not here. No, no, not here. It's you not don't want to do okay. because no. you want this to, to uh, puff up, and the finished dessert will look like that. Top, How long in the oven? Top with 375 for about uh, 40 minutes. OK, yum. And so delicious, a really cute. A single serving dessert. Oh, that's now, easier than it, Martha. Actually, oh my gosh, I would never These would make it. These are awesome. By this the is my way. happy place oh my right God. here. No, that's very impressive. We can't even talk. Yeah. So now, delicious. do you know what this is? Do you know what it's that a is? Granny Smith apple. I don't know what that is. Do you know what that is? A I'm afraid to, an apple. This is a quince. But it's oh. kind of a cross between an apple and a pear. Oh, okay. But oh, it's yeah. not edible it's uncooked. It's really, oh. they're very sour, very hard, very fibrous. So we cut them into uh, five quinces. We cut them, take the pits out, peel them, mm -hmm. and poach them in a wonderful syrup of maple syrup. Mm -hmm. Here we go, half yeah. uh, one cup of maple syrup. Mm and about a quart of water. Watch Carson, he's going to try to put bourbon in a that. vanilla bean. <laughs> I already did. Boy, this is, you have to split the vanilla bean. It's a little oh. hard over here. Oh, that's cool. And let the vanilla bean, and scrape it. You want to get all those seeds out. Do you know how to do that? No. Yeah, see the Never seeds? Done that. Those oh, are vanilla wow. bean seeds, see? And you leave the thing in But then you yeah. put the seeds in. And poach all of these until they're tender. <laughs> Look what they look at the color they Why turn. did you take the seeds out and then you put them back in? No, no, no seeds. Oh, okay. I thought you no, put no, them in there. No, no the okay. vanilla bean seeds. Yeah, that's what yeah. I need. Yeah. Oh okay. no, because that's the flavor. Oh, okay. Now here are your cooked quince. Wow. And you add to this cooked quince, just a little bit of the reduced poaching liquid. Mm -hmm. And is that the one the liquid from your pot? Yes. Okay. And you boil it down yeah. and you uh, add two teaspoons of cornstarch. Mm. Cornstarch will again thicken the juices. So you don't have a very runny dessert. Okay. And these, <laughs> that Woodford Reserve is going to love you. That's a good bourbon too. That's made right down in Kentucky. Mm. I know. Yeah. My people. Okay. So now this goes right into your baking dish. Okay. Those dishes. All that will thicken up. And this is the topping, which is flour, oh. cornmeal, and you can just. Oh, I love that. This it's just a crumble. Yeah, it's oh. sort of a crumble. Mm -hmm. All over the top like this. Yeah. Had a quince in your this life? You know, taste oh, it. You're going to love it. This is fantastic. Yeah, Have you tasted it? What do you think, guys? Do you love it? So good. Yeah. Someday yeah. my quince Have will come. This is a quince <laughs> crumble. I don't think I've ever had a quince, Martha. Oh, no, it is so good. We're having our first good. quince. Have you had a quince before? I? I grew, no, you oh, I grew I have not. I've never heard of it. It's been a best quince year, too. Really beautiful. Really good. Put this all over the top. And sprinkle your almonds, sliced almonds, on top of this. Today.com slash food is where you go. Yes. Mm -hmm. Pick up Martha's book. It's yeah. fantastic. We and ran out of time. Book number, book number 100. Have you written your tell-all yet? It's coming. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It'll be a good one. Uh, Thanks, Martha. I bet it'll tell some tales, Martha. And thank cranberry. You so don't, much. don't forget the cranberry skillet cake. That looks so good. And the recipes are on the website. And fruit desserts is out right now. Delicious. Thank you, thank Martha. You, thank you. Mm. Great Martha Stewart, she's making one of her favorites. It's a classic fish burger, and with more than 50 cookbooks full of recipes, for you to say this is one of your personal favorites, I mean, it's got to be good, Martha. Well, I I really like the fish hake. It's a inexpensive fish compared hake. hake.
Huh. And uh, it's a member of the codfish family, and, and it's a wonderful white fish. And when you cut it up into nice little cubes like this, it comes like that. That's a, uh -huh. that's a fillet. Mm. Um, just is it like a halibut? I've never heard of hake. No, no, it's it's lighter than a halibut. Okay. Mm. Uh, and and as I say, less expensive. Breadcrumbs. Uh huh. Nice fresh breadcrumbs. So just mm. take a white loaf and grind it up in the food processor. Okay. Two eggs. Yeah. Mm. Really easy. Are those eggs from your farm? Yes, they are. Of course they are. <laughs> yes, they are. The, oh, the hens are laying really well right now because of the warm use, like, weather. By the way, can you use boxed uh, 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 Italian breadcrumbs or panko or something like that? Uh, work, yes, or? you could. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. okay. I, but, I know you make uh, everything fresh. Though. But so this is a delicious and a little bit of cayenne pepper, which is very nice. Did you catch the hake in your little lake out there? <laughs> no, the no, hake is a saltwater fish. Okay. Not a fresh. How come you don't have a saltwater pond? Um, well, I'm so sorry, but in Maine I do. Okay. In Maine I do. In Maine you do. Oh, okay. Yes. okay. Well, then don't apologize if you have one. Incredible. A teaspoon of salt. Yep. Some freshly um, ground ch uh, chopped chives. Right from the garden, no oh, doubt. Yes, and uh, don't forget capers. Yeah, capers. Ooh, why are those a, crushed capers? A quarter of a cup mm -hmm. of chopped capers. Chopped mm -hmm. capers, okay. Rinse them out of the jar and then... Uh, How about some and, uh, mayo? Are you going to bind and, uh, this thing? Definitely. You're making like a crab cake, basically. It here. is. It's like a crab cake, but it's a burger. This because we're not going to... Amazing. Yeah. And here's the mayo. We have so our taster. Chanel's already finished. Oh my gosh, oh, I'm almost oh, finished. Oh, this so is almost, phenomenal. What do you, what do you oh, think, guys? It's perfect. So, so good. So delicious. Oh, Carson, wait until you try this. Why don't we eat more fish burgers in America? I don't know. Oh, it's not that hard to make. No, no. it's not hard at all. And it's all. a nice alternative to red meat. Uh -huh. exactly. It is. Or chicken. It uh -huh. is. And, or turkey. Right. Turkey burgers are good, too. They're one of my favorites. So this is a very nice mixture. Um, make the burgers. The nice way to make them uniform in size is to use a little ring like this, oh. like a biscuit ring. Okay. And uh, just take some of the nice mixture mm -hmm. and put mm. it in here, pack it. Mm -hmm. And I, I like to put this on parchment paper and chill it before I oh. um, oh, actually that, cook mm -hmm. the burgers. Look at that perfect burger. That's ideal. See how nice? Yep. I so I have, some, it at home, I have some that are already chilled. Okay. Yum. And they're going to go and why, right why into do we chill a, it, Martha? Why, a little why? olive oil. Why do you chill yeah. the burger? They hold their shape. Just hold oh, it together hold it a little together. Oh. Yeah, because the breadcrumbs and the mayo, it, it all Got it. gets mm -hmm. a little bit uh, firmer. It's a cold plunge. It's all the rage. And then just brown these. Yeah. Uh, and it takes oh, about good. eight minutes or ten minutes to cook. I gotta go back to the hake. How come I don't see hake well, at the, my you. local market? Is but it? you're not asking. You haven't looked. Oh, you have it. to ask for it. Yes, ask it's for it. It's there. What do they hold stuff in the back? No, they have the salmon. They have the cod. Right. They that. have the that. halibut. That's right. That. Some of these. Just are asking for the halibut. Just asking for the halibut. Pound now. For the halibut. Just for the halibut. And now this is this one of the one of the garnishes is pickled onions. Yeah. So this is Japanese rice wine vinegar. Okay. A little bit of sugar and mm -hmm. a little bit of salt. It's like a sake. Almost. A red, a red mm -hmm. onion, sliced, mm. peeled and sliced. You make and it. just let that stay for oh a day or two, and look what happens. It look pickles right up. Pickle. Yummy. Wow. See how pretty. What other sort of toppings do you like to put oh, on your fish? Oh well, burger? I like I like the onions. First, a little mayo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can. They're not. Yeah, ready I, I'm just kind of. So you're not how, ready. They really aren't. I thought they'd be no. sticky. This is and a mustard apart, mayo, a, a mustard. buttered a buttered brioche bun, Ugh. mustard mayo. So oh add about gosh. a couple of tablespoons of Dijon mm. mustard to your oh, mayo. Of course you would. It's so good. And the brioche bun. Get that bun. ready, and Carson, then put a couple Perfect. pickled onions I'm on. Carson, let's try these. Let me, while I have you, let me ask you just two quick business questions okay. here. Uh, book number 100, I believe, is in the workshop <laughs> autobiography. I'm, I'm running home right after this to to take more pictures. My hundred favorite recipes will be my hundredth wow. book. Wow. Oh, and I we learned a little ready? bit about you too in your uh, past. And oh yes, and a lot of a lot of when historic you were a pictures. Never a Marine. Okay. No. <laughs> Always a Girl Scout. Okay, right. Yes, definitely a Girl Scout. And how about the Roku show, Martha and, Cooks? Oh, gosh, we're doing that. Um, we have so many wonderful shows on Roku now. We They have my whole library, yeah, too. Yeah, that's uh, nice. On channel 448. Mm -hmm. I live at 48. <laughs> Right. I lived at 48 well, Turkey Hill Road. Well, don't and tell I live your at, address, Martha. Well, I live at 48. She's, she's I'm like currently? Not, I'm not, yeah, two houses, both number I'm going to edit that out. Yeah. So, no. Don't That's edit ridiculous. it out. 448. Well, they don't know question. where it is. I'll take care of it on the West Coast, it's, but we're, in, you're in trouble it, now. It, it's, in, it's in Hudson, New York. No, no, no. All right, just keep telling people. Has Snoop Dogg moved in yet? You're going to need his help here. No, not yet, but he, yeah, his bodyguard, Tiny, is the Tiny, Tiny, of course. Martha, as always, thank you so much. Thank you. Are you enjoying it? This is
Christmas, kick off the outdoor cooking season. Who better than America's favorite lifestyle maven, Martha Stewart? She's out with a, a new book. It's a guide to all things grilling. It's called What Else? But Martha Stewart's Grilling. Yes. The 95th cookbook. Yeah, well, 95th book. 95th yeah. book. Lots of those are cookbooks. But grilling, it's its the season. The weather has finally gotten beautiful. Yes. And, uh, and people really like to cook outdoors. I enjoy cooking outdoors as yes. well. In fact, now, do you have a less, grill like this, a charcoal? I, or? I'm a gas guy. You're a gas guy. Because it's faster for me. Okay. I've got small kids. I'm just trying to get in, get out. Right. But I know you love charcoal. I love, I love real hard charcoal, the kind the jewelers use. It gets up to 900 degrees. I like it really hot. And I really like pure. So I don't want to use any starter. Don't use those starter fluids. Okay. You know, start with, you know, but how do you keep your grates clean? I well, mean, first, of course, put your grill away clean. Every okay. time you use it, use a brush like this. Scrub that grate so it's nice and clean. Okay. You can use a little bit of oil on a piece of paper towel and a and a tong like this and yeah. clean your clean your grill. And then you cook. Now, this chicken has been cooking for oh about 20 minutes. You want chicken this is for the first the first recipe, you want the chicken 165 degrees. 165, yes. you need your outdoor thermometer. Yes, you, yes. you have your little th re instant read there thermometer and you just use that. All right, let's get then, cooking here, Martha. Okay, let's so this, this chicken. is chicken with green chili dressing. It is so delicious. Once it's cooked, you make a dressing of cilantro, uh, zest of lime, juice of one lime, olive oil. And we can make this dressing ahead of time. Oh yes, okay. and you can say it gets, actually gets better ahead of time some scallions, some serrano peppers. That's your dressing. That's pretty simple. And, oh, it's so simple. How long do you marinate? Um, well, you don't marinate. This is cooked on the grill, just oh. salt and pepper. Okay. And then you put the dressing on after it's cooked. Oh. And there it is. And everybody's going to have a taste. You're going to have a taste of this. You're going to love it. They're already this. tasting now. Oh, yeah. What's the verdict, now, Carson Daly? What do you think? Oh, I mean, come on. Chicken, Martha. good. What can't you do? It's amazing. Good. The next thing is the Korean uh, skirt oh, yeah. steak. That's the best. And now these are, it's sort of like a skirt steak, but it is a uh, short rib cut in the flank style. See this? See how beautiful I love ribs. Is? They're my favorite to yes. cook on the grill, but so traditional ribs So instead of the long forever. ribs, yes. This is cut in a, a, the opposite direction, and boy, is it good. This is marinated. And the marinade is soy sauce. Not marinade, no, no, marinade. Mar marinade. Marinade. <laughs> and it's, uh, it is rice vinegar, sesame seeds, white or black, soy sauce, scallion, a little bit of light brown sugar, and freshly grated um, ginger and garlic. Okay. You want to grate a little ginger? Yes, ma'am. How, uh, how much ginger do we use? Well, you just, just grate it like that, yep. You know, a lot. Go back and forth, yes. And then you Don't be afraid, all. Melvin. Just grate it. I'm grating it. Yeah. I'm grating it. Martha, is that enough? <laughs> yeah, that's good. And okay. put that all in there, yep. And then your short ribs go right in here. Those short ribs go right in here, and you put them on the grill. How long? How long? Uh, I do this overnight or okay. a couple hours before. So if you're if you're a late night, you know, if you you want to come home and cook, yes. these should be marinated overnight. What's the verdict on the short ribs? So, yeah. My favorite. Yeah. It's really good. Good. They are all Very marinated. Nice. Clean plate club. And then you just put these three minutes aside. I'll do that for you. Yep, you do that. I'll make myself useful here. Three minutes aside. Oh, yeah, nice and flat. Uh, yes, ma'am. And you can also use these protective gloves that have a little bit of silicon on them. So if you want to pick stuff Look up. Look at Guthrie helping out there. That's oh, right. Good. Do the we, got a, we got a burner over Five here. Five minutes aside. Yeah. Oh, okay. We got okay. about 20 that, minutes on this. Okay. Yeah. The others, yeah, do it that way. Yeah. Uh oh, yeah, that's I got pretty, there just in time. Pretty well done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so this is served on lettuce leaves well, with kimchi and the, um, the wonderful um, fermented chili now. sauce. Do you like that? And scallions and cucumber. Really and this is one. so, so delicious. That's how you serve it. All right. What so do you think? I'm a big fan of uh, Korean And then grilled food. salmon is oh. my favorite because I love light salads in the summertime. And a grilled salmon, this is a salmon that's been overcooked. <laughs> <laughs> Not really. No, that's, fine. That is so beautiful. Look how nice. Use one of these baskets for doing fish. Cooking fish can be a bit intimidating on the grill. It, it, I yeah, find that it falls apart. Yeah, or, but this is this great, that's why you this have one great of those. basket. Yeah. Use one of your this yeah. is Martha Stewart basket. It is, but uh, but uh, you can find these in uh, other brands too. What's in the salmon salad and really quickly? Salmon salad is the, is the uh, salmon that's been cooked with a little bit of lemon zest. Always squeeze wow. fresh lemon juice over it. Flake it up. You want to flake it up or you can stir. 
I'll stir it. Yes, ma'am. And there's a great dressing. Do you like anchovy? I, I do, in oh, moderation. Good. So there's, there's a dressing with olive oil, anchovy, a little mustard, salt, and pepper. Just pour that all over the whole thing. Whole thing, whole bottle? Yep. Okay. And then flake the salmon into big flakes. Al, what's the verdict? This is terrific. Delicious. Like a yeah. salmon dish Where would you get here? these eggs, Martha? Martha those egg, those are eggs those right are fresh. at... You can find all the recipes today.com slash Martha Stewart for Martha's yeah. book. Yep. Today.com slash shop. We're back today, food. We're heading to this 4th of July weekend. We have called in the expert to sweeten the celebration. Martha Stewart's here. She's going to show us how to make a sour cherry pie with three different spins on the crust. Is that right? right? Exactly. Sour cherries can be hard to find in the grocery store, no? Well, they're, they all, it's a very short season. Okay. So maybe two weeks, three weeks at the most. All right. And most of them come from places like New York State or Michigan, and they're beautiful. They're like little rubies, oh. and but you have to pit them. Okay. Because otherwise, your family or your friends will break their teeth. They have already. These have already been. Yeah. Pitted, this is so this is a silly little pitter. Okay. That there's is a not better, the pitter you want. No, because there's a better pitter that I don't have with me, and it, it does multiples at, at the okay. same time. So. Oh. This is aren't the they good? Today's show pitter. We won't be. Using that. <laughs> okay. And so here is. The f it's the pits, exactly. <laughs> so this is the first crust with a nice fluted edge. Always make your pastry cold. Cold butter, cold flour, okay. cold water, and then uh, roll it out, keep cold it chilled. Heart. Fill it with the filling, which is sugar, a little bit of flour, a little bit of butter, and this is the crumb topping. Mm. This is, is this the easiest of the toppings, Martha, the crumb topping? Yeah, very easy. It's just butter, flour, uh, brown sugar, and a pinch of salt. And so you just crumble the crumble over the top of the pie, bake it hot, like in a 400 degree oven. It is so good. I love Let's a crumble. See. Yeah, isn't I love it great? A so yeah, amazing. crumble, crisp, yeah. whatever you want to call it. But it put a lot on because it really does yeah. enhance the sourness of those delicious cherries. Okay. Now, here is a very cute topping. This is the solid crust pie. Okay. And this is, you cut the, you cut the a little, if you have a round cookie cutter, you can do that. Yeah. But you can also use a pastry cutter like that to cut the rounds. This lets the steam escape. Oh. And your crust will get nice and crispy. Do you have a favorite? Top, a favorite crust no, top? No, no, I make all of these. Okay, all you're these. agnostic when it and comes now to the, it. And okay. now this is the most complicated. You roll out your dough and you uh, lattice top. 
Mm. The lattice top. Lattice top. That, that looks intimidating. So you can fake it and oh, just put it over, put them one way and then the other way. But if you're very particular, you can actually oh, weave wow. the lattice. See? What's the hardest part about it? The weaving or getting the pieces to be rolling uniform? it out, rolling yeah. it out, and then cutting it with a little pastry wheel like this? Oh, yeah. How's what's, that? Would you like that pastry wheel? No, not no. <laughs> there's, there's, no, why'd you ask? You, you, you knew what she was gonna say. I, Martha and I've been you. together a long time. There are, there are better. There are better pastry I'm just wheels. Stirring the pot, yes. but, it, but it works. Spoon. It works. It don't you know? And so now remember, this one has to go way under here, okay. so because you're gonna weave it. And see? do you bake bake the pies off for the same amount of time, regardless of uh, the, the crust topping? No. Oh, some of them take a little longer than others, okay. like the solid crust will take a little longer than the lattice. But look how pretty when you really weave it. Oh, it's really good. This lemonade is what? This, this. Well, this is sour cherry lemonade. Oh. Very so sour. you can put your sour cherries, make a make a uh, syrup a of, of the sour cherries. Well, that's good. And, that's and you refreshing. mix it with lemon and orange and a little bit of mint, and that is so good. Sour cherries are just one of my favorite fruits. Martha Stewart, you're one of our favorite people. And here, this is for you. Oh, Martha oh. made me cherry pie, y'all. So what are these cute napkins? So cool. Did you make these uh, too? Yes, these are these are bandanas, and then you can stencil the names on them. That oh. is so you cute. Your Martha, thank you. Yeah. you go. Recipes today.com <laughs> slash food. <laughs>
you know, if you're going to have a grilling party, why not make it really interesting? Not just hot dogs, but special all beef hot dogs, kielbasa, uh, Ooh, a Greek sausage we just found called Ooh. called uh, Lucanico. It's it's a combination of uh, meat and uh, oregano and lemon, mm. and we have beautiful cheddar bratwurst. Oh, These are so yum. pretty, and uh, and then of course, don't forget the rolls. The rolls have to be uh, beautifully buttered. Uh, before you put them on the grill, oh, and yeah. make sure roll, yeah. you don't burn stuff. Yeah, you know Al Roker, he's he's also a proponent of not burning stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, if the flame is up high like that, just move the stuff or spray it with a a little spray bottle. But get your your rolls nicely, just slightly charred. Mm. And the condiments, oh my gosh, look at all the condiments we have on here: bread and butter pickles, French mustard. Mm. Um, this is the uh, you know the baseball stadium mustard, of course. Mm -hmm. Chopped onions, red relish, green relish, sauerkraut, my favorite, oh. mm. sour cream. Uh, you have um, uh, spicy mustard, tomatoes chopped up, and this is fantastic—a a beet horseradish mustard. Oh, wow. So horseradish. and bacon and dill pickles. Yum. And doesn't that make your mouth water? Don't you want Looks one good. of these right now? I wish you were here, Martha. Maybe you ought to close the lid, Martha, just to kind of knock that fire down. Yeah, that's yeah, a good idea. Yeah, for one second, you're right. And I love this grill dome. This is a custom colored. You can get it any color you uh -oh. want. I love mm. this. So you, yeah, you can have it match your house, your backyard, whatever. It's a really clever, clever thing. Yeah. Oh, so there let's it goes. Let, let that hey, Martha, cool down a little bit. Hey, Martha, yeah. what's your per describe how you would prepare your perfect hot dog what what are your condiments what do you like on yours oh well let's let's get one right here here's a hot dog and on a buttered bun and I would put first I like French mustard so mm -hmm. I would put a nice mm -hmm. Dijon mustard on oh, I love relish mm -hmm. and I would put relish do you know I have a hot dog at every hot dog stand it's called a Martha dog what? And, uh, and every place is a little bit Different from yeah, Rutz Hut has a Martha dog, uh, Raleigh's in Fairfield has a Martha what? dog, uh, the great hot dogs, the hot dog place in California in L.A. has a oh, hot Pink's? dog called the Martha dog. Oh yeah, Pink's yeah. I have. A, does Al Roker have a hot dog at Pink's? I do not. I do you not. Have a I got dog. Martha oh, Stewart. Well, Come on. I think I think I think you should be working on that one, Al, because <laughs> those are very famous. Uh -huh. And so that's what I have: pickles, and I love bacon on my. Mine too. Oh, I'm wow. going to put a piece of bacon in oh, there. That's a good one. So there there's you go. my hot that's dog. A good one. Well, I love and Martha. Martha, <laughs> Martha, one more thing. What do you call them when it gets really crispy, when your dogs get really crispy? Oh, snappies. These snap. snappies. Oh, yeah. Oh, and okay. I right. love those. Yeah, um, Raleigh's is famous for snappers as well as Rut Hut. Rut's Hut is also uh, famous for snappers. Okay. That right. you get, you know, snaps, snappers you put in hot oil first. Oh, you know, you, you fry right. them a little What's bit. What's happening then, to that grill? Martha, that's the yeah, secret. She opens it a little flame going on. Okay. Oh, yeah. okay. All, right. All right, Martha, okay. thank you so no, much. No, no, this is good. <laughs> okay. Is one of the longest running food shows on the Food Network. Folks love watching the up and coming chefs beat Bobby Flay, or at least they tried to. He's invited some fellow celebrity chefs to give it a go on his new show, Beat Bobby Flay Holiday Throwdown. And today, Bobby's going to throw down in our kitchen with some chicken parm. Everybody loves yeah. chicken parm. Yeah. Bobby, good to see you, man. Thank How you so you? much. Well, it's so good to be here. Um, it's holiday season. It is. Yeah. Do you, do you cook a big turkey for Thanksgiving? I do. I do. Uh, I, Thanksgiving is my. Um, it's my favorite day of the yeah. year. Actually, I'm going to be here next week. Um, oh, good. Oh, in the yeah, 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 yeah. There's going to be a lot of food in this place. Okay, good. Oh, man. I'll, I'll be back crazy. then. I'll okay. be back. So we're going to make chicken parm. This is okay. a dish, obviously, I, I call this chicken parmigiano as opposed to chicken parmesan. It's a little bit cleaner version of, of the classic. And I just put this on my menu uh, in, in Amalfi in okay. Las Vegas. Uh -huh. Okay, so a couple of things. You look like you're not going to cook. You got your hands in your pocket. Cooking, you want to do this? Oh, I okay. Love it. okay. Pressure chicken parm. So chicken cutlets. Okay. This is yep. this is classic. So um, flour, eggs, breadcrumbs, so, and so you set up a dredging station. You season every single. Um, oh, each of part them. of it. Okay, yes, exactly. Because otherwise it's bland. So you go. So the so the flour to the. <laughs> e <laughs> is that bad? I don't no, no. You're doing no, great. You, no, get in there, you right? can tell that Willie cooks. You he's he's in there. Okay. And then and then and then the eggs hold on to the panko breadcrumbs. Exactly. Ah, oh. And then you let that sit there That's for a second, a and we just Come put on. it in the oil. I'm actually using avocado oil more these okay. days than canola oil. Mm -hmm. and, I mean, they say it's better for you, so I say, okay, why not? Okay, so 
Are people laughing at my cooking? I, don't I think know. I'm doing great. I don't know. What are they laughing Get about? Get your hands dirty. Okay, so you want to make, yeah, make just sure just your hands. Really. So, so every every culture has their own version of chicken cutlet, right? So we have. Um, <laughs> I've lost them. Thanks for coming. No, I'm, I'm with you. Okay. So then we. So every every culture has their version of chicken cutlet. Obviously, this is sort of an American Italian version. We're gonna make tomato sauce. Okay. I have three ingredients in my tomato sauce: onions, garlic, and then some and some crushed them to, crushed tomatoes. And I let this cook for about 45 minutes. How do you, you just? Oh, you crush them with the potato I, and masher? I, and first, you let it cook for about 25 minutes so they soften. Okay. And then I crush them with a potato okay. masher so that it actually has texture. Yeah. Got and it. then I put like a little sugar. This is very controversial. Some people say don't ever put sugar in your tomatoes, but you know what? If they're acidic, you want a little sugar to yeah, bounce, why not? bounce it why out. Not? Okay. Okay. So then we have the chicken cutlet, and then I take some buffalo mozzarella, mm, look at that. and I just put it right on look top. Now, that. now here's the thing that I do. You see, I leave some of the crispy bits uncovered because oh, yeah. we want that good contrast of texture. Crunchy, yeah. Exactly. We put it in the oven. I love this. I love this kitchen. You put it. You put it in this oven, and then it comes out of this it's oven magic. right here. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So here it is. So then we take some of the tomato sauce, and, uh, and instead of dousing it uh, all over the chicken and then ruining that crispiness, I put the tomato sauce on the bottom. And the then, cheese is melted uh, on top, and then see, it's it's a, it's a much cleaner so version. Yeah, a little bit of nice. fresh basil Look. and a whole bunch of Parmigiano Reggiano cheese. Look at that. May yeah. I start, Chef? Yes, yes you can. Okay. And then some fresh arugula because this is a very healthy dish. Mm -hmm. And then a little bit of just olive, olive oil, oil on top. And there we go. Mm. Nice sneak in here, Bob. Get in there. Let me Get try. In there. Get oh, in there. Bob. Thank you. Is it yummy? Mm. So good. Yeah, Bob. I mean, see, so here's the thing. The really nice thing about it is you get wow. obviously the acidity mm. and the sweetness of the tomatoes. Mm. You get that crispy contrast, the mm -hmm. texture on the chicken, mm. and of course that fresh mozzarella. Is, it is feels beautiful. a little light, which you can't always say for a chicken parm. Well, the thing about chicken parm, and, and you and I uh, sort of share that that love of chicken parmesan, you know, where it's kind of doused in all that cheese and yeah. tomatoes. Mm -hmm. But this is a, to me, this is like a, this is like a Tuesday night version of the Sunday night yeah. meal. There you go. Yeah, exactly. I, um, did I hear you're in a movie? Wait, uh, what? Bobby Flay is in One let, Delicious Christmas? Let me tell wait, you something. Come on. I, yes, the Come Oscar on. buzz has been so <laughs> overwhelming. Wait, wait, I mean, <laughs> what are you talking, who do you play, yourself? This is, I play, I play Tom Kingsley, who is a, a, a food critic. Uh, it's called One Delicious Christmas. Um, yes, they wanted me to act. I said, don't do it, but they said, please do it. So here it is. So <laughs> when do you see that? And where? Uh, it's coming on uh, November 11th, Discovery Plus. Oh, um, it's tomorrow. Tomorrow? Yeah, yeah exactly. Plus. Oh, That's yes. So cool. we, uh, viewing everywhere. There'll be viewing parties Everyone's all over the place talking about for it. One Delicious Christmas. Exactly. Bobby, How do you congratulate. really feel about a food critic, though? I In love food life. critics. Okay. Great. Yes, we love food critics. <laughs> Thank you, Bobby. Make this recipe at home. Go to today.com slash food. Thanks, Bobby. Great to see you. Man. We're back with Today Food, and one of our very favorite guests, our pal, Bobby Flay. Oh, I'm so excited. He's an award-winning chef, the author of 216 best-selling 216? And we At can't least. forget about his hit show, <laughs> Beat Bobby Flay. By the way, new episode tonight, where two chefs go head-to-head -head in the kitchen for a chance to face off against the master himself. This morning, Bobby is sharing a fantastic pasta dish with us. Uh, good to see you, Mr. Flay. Good to see you guys. Bobby. Bobby. Thanks for waking up yeah. uh, early. What are yeah, we, what are we cooking, honey? So we're making uh, we're making a baked pasta. It's one of those dishes that I think is fantastic for like a Sunday night meal. It's very very comforting, and it's something that uh, can feed the whole family. So let's get started. It's going to be rigatoni. It's going to be some hot Italian sausage, some broccoli rabe, and some tomato sauce. A little vodka sauce there as well. So I'm going to start off by cooking some rigatoni uh, and some salt and water. You know, you, you've seen this a million. Time for the Today Show. Lots of salt in your water. Make sure it's boiling. Abundance of water. We're gonna cook the rigatoni for about eight or nine minutes. Well, while that's cooking, we're gonna get our, get our sauce going. So we have some hot Italian sauces that I've cooked off a little bit. Some tomato sauce. I've made my own, um, but if you have a good uh, a good quality tomato sauce that you like, you can definitely use that as well. And we're gonna add a little bit of vodka. This is that uh, you know one of the one of the most classic Italian American pasta dishes is pasta alla, alla vodka. It's basically a tomato sauce with a little bit of vodka in it and um, a touch of cream. So it, it almost becomes like a little bit of a pink sauce. Really delicious. What does the vodka yeah, do to it? Question. What's that? What does the vodka do to it, Bobby? The vodka actually helps emulsify the cream in the tomato sauce so it doesn't, um, so it doesn't separate. It's, uh, it, it's sort of a binder in, in, in a sense. And also, it's like, I mean, who doesn't want to cook with vodka? I mean, there you go. <laughs> Oh. So, so, so basically, you're making like a creamy tomato sauce with the with the hot Italian sausage, and then um, just because we want to make sure that it's nice and healthy, I'm going to put some broccoli rabe in there as well. 
Okay. And then we're gonna take this sauce, I'm gonna pour it right over the cooked pasta. This is some rigatoni that I had, you know, cooked ahead of time. Okay. So we're just gonna, we're gonna cover the, uh, the pasta in the sauce, and I'm gonna add some fontina cheese to it. Yum. And this is all gonna go into a casserole dish. And I mm. love cooking things, I, you know, I call it oven to table, where you, where you, you know, you create something in the kitchen, you put it in an earthenware or some sort of uh, oven-proof dish like mm -hmm. this one. So, Bobby, you did, did you cook that pasta al dente because it's going to be cooking longer in the oven? Yes. That's actually, I thought that's a great point. You want to cook it a little bit undercooked, so maybe like three-quarters of the way because it's going to sit in the sauce, it's going to bake in the oven at about 350 degrees, and on top, we're going to put some fresh, some, some grated mozzarella and some Parmigiano-Reggiano cheese, and then we're going to go to the oven. Hey, Bobby, how do you keep it from sticking on the bottom? Oh, it's not going to stick because, we, you know, there's lots of tomato sauce in there. It's going to be totally fine. Oh, and actually, if it, um, if it gets a little crusty on top, that's actually a good thing. It's like, you know, like when you have the lasagna and the, and, and the edges and the crispiness mm -hmm. on the round, what mm -hmm. you always want that part of it. You, get, you definitely get a little bit of this as well. You want to let this bake in the oven about 350 degrees for... I don't know, about 15 to 20 minutes, because don't forget, the pasta's already cooked, the sauce is already hot. We're just heating it up. And then at the last second, for the last three or four minutes, turn your oven up to oh. broil. Mm. Pour yourself up. Cook the time. This is part of the recipe, by the way. And then take out your uh, take out your, your pasta, and you can see, this is what it's gonna look like. Let's see. Oh my gosh. Oh, yes. Yes. oh I hope that's what I'm that's talking about. Over here. Oh. If you're watching this at home, make Fresh this. Herbs. Yeah. And there you go. Oh, it's delicious. Make, Man, make it out this weekend. Yeah. And then basically, you know, you can just take a, take a little bit and just try to kind of put it in a bowl. Look at that. Nice and chewy, uh, cheesy. Yeah. Just look at that. That's I it. mean, after looking at that, Bobby, it's amazing that anybody beats you on Beat Bobby Flay. Yeah. How's it going over there? Beat Bobby Flay is great. We've done, uh, we've done close to 400 episodes, Jeez. which is insane. <laughs> But I have to tell you, I'm having more fun than ever. Um, it's so great to be able to welcome, you know, you know, chefs from all over the country to come in and, and take me down. It's actually way more fun when I lose because the chefs are so excited. It's great for their community when they win. You, you know, they usually have like all these, they have like viewing parties in their, in their local community. It's great. Be Bobby Flay has been so much fun for me for the last, does, I don't know. Does your, does your girlfriend like watching it? <laughs> You guys, Carson asked me if my girlfriend was awake. Oh. The only person awake right now in L.A. is me cooking baked pasta for you. It's 5.50 in the morning. How yeah, well, if you would just yeah. pull that sausage out of that dish, then she'd have a dish that she could eat if you were a little more thoughtful. Oh, oh. Actually, Carson, you know what? You, you've actually done your research because Christi Christina does not eat meat. I know that. Yes. So if you take the sausage out of here, she's all good. There you go. We just put a, well, we just put a picture over there as well. <laughs> well, he, last time Bobby was on, he was very secretive about this whole relationship. Yeah, like, okay. Then he spilled his guts to People Magazine. Now it's fair game. Oh, yeah. so she's yeah. a lovely, yeah. lovely, yeah. lovely yeah. lady. Hey, Bobby, real quick. We, we loved your restaurants in New York yeah. City. So amazing over the years. Anything new on the horizon? Anything we can look forward to? In New York City, um, well, we're, we're sort of in the wait and see kind of thing right now for New York because, you know, I've, I've always had restaurants in New York my entire adult life. And, uh, you know, we're just going to see what happens. You know, I just opened the Malfi in Las Vegas about five or six months ago. That's going really well. And uh, listen, you know, New York has my heart. So at mm -hmm. some point, we'll be back there. All right. We'll All right. To Thanks, Bobby. Thank you, Bobby.
this morning on Today Food, the one and only Bobby Flay. For decades, we've watched him create some of our favorite dishes on countless TV shows and more than a dozen cookbooks. His latest is called Sundays with Sophie, and it takes us inside the Flay family kitchen, a collection of dishes inspired by meals with his daughter, Bobby. Good morning. Good morning. Well, this has got to be near and dear to you. You're, like, does Sophie cook too? You've been teaching her your skills? Yes, yeah, she, she does. So Sundays with Sophie. Sophie's basically standing in for everybody. The, oh. the idea is that it's, you know, it's Sunday meals or just meals for the family around the table. And actually, I, I devised a lot of these recipes during the quarantine because, like everybody else, I was cooking three meals a day at home. And so the recipes are incredibly simple, and they're really built for the home cook. Oh, good. I love that. Okay, yeah. simple. You had me at hello. Okay. Talk about this poached egg. This okay. is cacio e pepe poached eggs. Cacio e pepe <laughs> poached eggs. So cacio e pepe simply means cheese and pepper. Yes. We usually see it classically on pasta. Yeah. But everybody's cacio e pepe everything. Now, at is this, this point. a breakfast or is this? I know. Is this breakfast or is this dinner? Oh um, no. Like, this this is like this is like breakfast or brunch or okay. like it could definitely be like a late night. Listen, I, I, there's plenty of times I. I love, I love uh, you know eggs for dinner. Me too. And so basically, what I do is I make a vinaigrette. This is very okay. very simple. So it's some white vinegar, some honey, some shallots. Mm -hmm. Okay. This reminds me of what we did our cooking thing together. I know. Remember? I know. I know. Do you want me to stir that? I can do that. Yeah, now. sure. Go right ahead. <laughs> exactly. Look at me whisking. And then some olive oil. And then we're going to add some Parmigiano Reggiano cheese, of course. And then some mm. cracked black pepper. So okay. there, there's the cheese. There's the cacio and the pepe, so to speak. I mean, this is black delicious pepper. right here. This is our little dressing. Exactly. Okay. There you go. So then we're going to poach some eggs. And a lot of people are... are I'm intimidated. Intimidated. All right, show me. So it's, it's two ingredients. One of them is water. The <laughs> other is some vinegar. Okay. okay? Oh. And the vinegar is going to help the egg. This is my big word of the day. Coagulate the egg. Oh, okay. So, so that it kind of brings it to... <laughs> a little vinegar. Do you guys know how to poach an egg? No, Al, I know no, you. No, no, Raise no. your hand if you can poach no, an egg. No. Al can. Oh, oh I, okay, yeah. Al poaches eggs with his eyes closed. Okay, <laughs> okay so, so we're going to just, and, and, and here's a little tip. I, I crack the eggs and I first put it into a little ramekin because mm -hmm. if I break it, I don't want to put it in here. Oh, true. And a lot of times you do that if you just, you just kind of go right into the water. Okay. So we're going to let those poach. They poach for, you know, just like, uh, I don't know, three or four minutes. And, and, and the best thing to do is kind of just do a little whirlpool so it gets a, gets a okay. really beautiful shape. Seems like it'd be hard to get those out. Oh, no, they come them. right out. Really? As okay. You, <laughs> as, as soon as you can get them out, you just take them out. It's very, very simple. Okay. Should be no problem. Okay. okay. We have some toast over here. All right. Okay. So. Um, sourdough bread, some kind of country loaf. Mm -hmm. I like mine like slightly thick, maybe, I don't know, maybe an, sort of like uh, an inch and a half or so, or so like that. And then just some, you know, good quality olive oil mm -hmm. on the bread. Yeah. And then some salt and pepper. And this is one of the things that people forget when they're making toast. Don't forget to season it as well. Okay. Salt and pepper your toast. Like bring out the flavor of that delicious oh, yeah, bread I, that you I have. I never do that. Okay. Exactly. Good call. Okay. So we have the toast. I put a little more. I, I, I you take, just roast this in the oven, or you I'm put sorry, this in yeah. like the toaster oven? So you can oven. put it in the oven. You can put it under the broiler, or okay. you can just put it in a toaster. Got it. I think a toaster is probably the <laughs> best case okay. scenario, yeah. right? That's it works. What's happening over here? Should we get these out? Uh, you can do that if you want, but we're down here. Okay. Well, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was just concerned but about that. This is this is Savannah <laughs> in the kitchen right here. Distracted. <laughs> <laughs> Coming to Food Network. Um, <laughs> okay, so we have uh, some a garlic clove, and I just rub the garlic clove a little bit on, okay. the, on the bread, just to give it a little bit of flavor. Yeah. You know, this is a very savory meal. A little more olive oil, mm. and then we take our poached eggs, and we put the poached eggs right on top. Whoops! Mm. Right on top of our our bread. Okay. And then we take our dressing. Yes. Okay. Now this is the good stuff. And this Dressing's is where fantastic. this is where all the flavor comes in. Okay. Oh yeah. Just How pour that right over there. Finish it. Really good. Some Parmigiano. Oh my oh. God. Some fresh Boom. chives. I mean, come on. Can you make the dressing ahead of time? Though? Absolutely. And of course, you can use it for salads. Or you I was can about put it on to ask that. Vegetables. Anything. Absolutely. Very very versatile. Okay. But this is what I was doing at home. It's like you know, so doing, yummy. you're at home. Like you just take the ingredients that you have in your cupboard and you make dishes. And, and this this was one of them. Okay. Well, that looks. Should I have a bite? Yeah, yeah. Sure. Don't worry yeah. about those other Dive eggs. in and go grab them. Okay, I'll I just okay. so want to know You got to cut it. Okay, here we go. You, someone else gonna have to read gets this. Gets gooey. Piece. Gets gooey. Uh huh. Gets gooey. Yeah. Oh, oh, fantastic. Yeah. 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 Fantastic. Well, you made Bobby. Wow, okay. That's a GIF right there. <laughs> Someone's working on it. You can catch wow. Bobby again on, the third on our hour. third hour. You can also get his recipes today.com slash food.
This morning and today, food, our friend Bobby Flay. Bobby Flay is here with an easy meal to make the entire family happy. He's also out with a new show. It's called Bobby's Triple Threat. It's where he challenges some really talented chefs to go up against his hand-picked culinary That's tastes. That's awesome. Mm. He also has a brand new cookbook out. It's called Sundays with Sophie that he wrote with the help of his little dog. Bobby, always good to have you. It's not really fair to call Sophie little anymore. No, she's 26. Yeah. 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 But That's she'll, no be, she'll be calling you after this. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes, Sophie. Yeah. Um, what was the impetus behind the cookbook? Well, you know, I, I did all these recipes because during quarantine, like everybody else, I was cooking three or four meals a day right. at home. And, and finally, I actually decided to write them down. Hmm. But, but the great thing about it is I was basically utilizing all the things at my fingertips. And so the recipes are incredibly simple. It's really a, you know, Sophie, it's Sundays with Sophie, but Sophie's basically standing in for everybody. Okay. It's, it's, they're they're okay. family meals. Mm -hmm. So what are we making? What so are today making we're first? making a creamy rigatoni. We have some spicy sausage in there as well. Mm -hmm. Some roasted eggplant. So it's mm -hmm. it's it's helpful. It's spicy. It's it's got big flavors and it's easy to make. So people tend to be afraid of eggplant. They do tend to be uh, afraid of eggplant. But it's actually this is a, actually a very quick and easy way to cook it, Al. Just take a little bit of olive oil over some diced eggplant. I put a little salt and pepper, and so you, you don't put even it. Peel it. You, no, you don't have to peel it. And okay. I put it in the oven. That's for, it. for about 30 minutes and it roasts okay. and it gets really nice and soft Ooh. and you can reserve it, okay? Then we have some spicy sausage that I saute and, uh, you know, get nice and brown, try to get a little color on the outside, mm -hmm. make sure it's cooked all the way through. And then you have these sort of juices in the bottom. And then because, you know, it's the fall, I, I, I want to make it sort of a little bit heady, so I'm going to add a little red wine to start. Oh. What kind of wine do you use? Um, I use uh, like a good table wine. It could okay. be a Pinot Noir or Cabernet. It doesn't really matter. And then, you know, something that you, that you want to eat. Stand back just because yeah, I have Stand by, give a white dress on, and then, <laughs> and then and then some tomato sauce, mm. and then we you let the tomato sauce and the um, and the red wine cook together, mm -hmm. picks up all that flavor. Any secret to your homemade tomato sauce? Uh, three ingredients: onions, garlic, tomatoes. That's it. That's and it. If, and it taste them. If they're a little acidic, I, I put a pinch of sugar. I know that's controversial, mm -hmm. but like, let's make let you know. It tastes good. Exactly you, right. Do you break like break them up in a blender, or do you? Just... I crush them with like a potato masher okay. while they're cooking. Could you oh. use canned? If you. I definitely use canned. Okay. Absolutely, okay. canned tomatoes are good. So okay. we have our roasted eggplant. We put it in here with the with the um, with the sausages and the tomatoes, mm -hmm. and then we have some rigatoni. It doesn't have you, to be rigatoni. Why do you like uh, the rigatoni? For this I like rigatoni because it has a little bite to it, you oh, know, okay. and and also the the holes running Fried. through it actually pick up some of the sauce. Then we're going to add a little uh, creme fraiche to this oh my God. so we can make it creamy. Don't get that on your beautiful I white know, dress. I I'm still standing back. Okay. Oh, my goodness. And then Thank some you. Parmigiano-Reggiano cheese. Mm. Oh, Bobby. Oh, man. That's, Are you kidding? That's some funny. basil. I'm here, I'm, here, I'm here for oh comfort. Oh, my God. I'm here for comfort. I'm very comfortable. Some fresh oregano. Oh, this is so <laughs> very, this comforting. very comforting. You guys, you're oh like, God. oh, let, let them cook. We're going to go eat. That's, that's right. it. Yeah. We're like, that's enough, Bobby. You, you, know that help. you guys have like a four course meal every single day yeah. on the show. <laughs> it's the greatest like, place in the world. It's time to eat now, Bobby. But you were one of the first people in the last hour who actually made breakfast for us on, during a breakfast. We breakfast. were so taken aback. We like, well, breakfast, breakfast is very important in the morning. But look, it's so, oh, it was pretty delicious. simple to make, and this is amazing. Thank you very much. And again, you know, I had some, I had some ingredients, and that's that's yeah. what I came up with. And so, and so, um, you know, the book is really about simple ingredients, mm -hmm. and it gets the family around the table. And yeah. to me, that's the most important. Which is thing. the most important. Yeah. Could you make like a double batch of the sauce and the sausage, and then freeze it? Al, absolutely. You can you can definitely freeze the sauce for sure, and then and then when you you know when you want to use it, you know a couple weeks later, or whatever, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. to thaw it out. But th this is also a great family style. This Big bowl so of this for Sunday oh, dinner. Oh, yeah. Bobby, make it happen. Thank you, Bobby. The whole family will love this.
with Today Food, joined by one of our favorite chefs, Ooh. our Bobby Flay. That's right. He's got a new book out next week called Beat Bobby Flay. Conquer the kitchen with 100 plus battle tested oh. recipes. Oh. Yeah, this morning, Bobby's teaching us how to win in the kitchen with one of his all-time favorite dishes. Bobby, just when you think you know everything about chili, you're going to do something. Is it a secret ingredient? Is it like, are you going to add some coffee grinds to it? Or are you going to, what are you doing? You're just taking the meat out? You're robbing us? <laughs> well, I, I, it is a vegetarian dish, but Carson, you have to understand, first of all, on Beat Bobby Flay, I don't get to decide what the signature dish that we're cooking is. It's the other chef. Oh, that's right. So I got challenged to vegetable chili, and also my girlfriend doesn't eat meat, so, you know, I got to adjust. Smart so man. how do you make it works. good? Smart man. Well, I'm going to tell you right now. So come on over. So um, I'm going to start by making the base of the chili. Every, I always say everything good starts with onions and garlic. So we're going to start with some onions and garlic and then some tomatoes as well. And, of course, you need to bring some spices into the game. And, Bobby, so well, who's like your girlfriend? <laughs> no, uh, you buried the lead. I, I, wow. Just kidding. I, I, I knew you were going to go there. Yeah. I knew yeah. you were going to go there. Well, you brought it up. Uh, she will re she's going to rename uh, Nameless for now. Okay. But, but okay. thanks for asking. I'm just going to Google it. I'll have it by the end of the oh. segment. Wow. <laughs> All right. So the go chili ahead. Went right out the, the window. window. Sure did. Nothing remains nameless, Where'd you Bobby. Meet? It's How'd 2021. How'd you guys meet? Anyway, so then you add then you add a dark beer to the uh, uh -huh. to the chili, which yeah. is one of those secret ingredients, with, right? And then this becomes the base of it. Now, Carson was asking, like, you know, you rob us of the meat, but you can use things that are veg that are vegetables that actually wow. give us the uh, the texture. Very of the attractive. Meat, meat so like. So we're going to Very we're going Carson to uh, we're Carson found Carson found on the internet. I will not say it out loud. Very, but very impressive. No, he did. He did. No he did. Yeah. Okay. Vegan so or we vegetarian? Have, <laughs> no, you veg really are dating have, up, Bobby. You are really wow. dating up. You are a lucky wow. man. All right, so anyway, went off the rails. Mix, what what vegetables are you using there, Bobby, to replace so the meat? So thank you so much, Al. Thank you so much. So we <laughs> okay. have uh, we wow. have eggplant and portobello mushroom Ooh. because they they have that sort of meaty texture. Mm -hmm. We're gonna add that to the to the chili as well. And we're going to let this cook for a little while. And then basically what happens is you have the base of the chili and it mm -hmm. looks and feels like chili. It tastes like chili, but it's completely meatless. And, and then the thing I love about chili is that it becomes like this canvas for all these like really cool garnishes that you can put on top, which is really the king, oh, right? Nice so Ooh, that's beautiful. We have some yogurt that uh, has a little bit of uh, uh, shishito peppers in it and some lime juice. Mm. We want that nice cooling effect. And I have some avocados in here with some um, with some diced red onions mm -hmm. and some chilies. Yeah. I'm gonna put some avocado mm. on top. It's almost like uh, the chili becomes a vehicle for all these cool things that you want to eat. A, little, a, a few tortilla chips with some crunch. Mm -hmm. Got to make sure you have that crunch going. Hey, Bobby, does, it, does the chili take cheese. less time because it's meat based? I mean, vegetable based than, in, than yeah. a meat based one would. It does, Al, because you know if you're cooking something like eggplant or portobello mushrooms, it's going to uh, it's going to cook a lot quicker. You just want to make sure that the mushrooms and the eggplant mm -hmm. cook all the way through, because then it absorbs all the flavor from the base of the chili itself. You want to cook at that dark beer. You want to get some of that earthiness as well, and uh, and then you know you, you just you, st you start to garnish it. A little bit of lime zest on top. So you have some acidity, you have some spiciness, you have a little sweetness, mm. all the good things, and it's a uh, it's a very warming dish. I have to say, like when I first said when I first heard that I had to make vegetable chili mm -hmm. on beef Bobby Flay, I was kind of bummed out because mm -hmm. right. you know I am I am a meat eater, and um, but I have to say like the eggplant and the mushrooms do a great job of substituting yeah. it. And of course, it's a little bit healthier. I mean, people are eating a lot more vegetables. I was going to say, are, are plant ba is plant based having its moment now, Bobby? Oh, it's unbelievable. You know, as a chef. We constantly have to adjust to uh, to the trends of the way people are eating. And I will say one thing. People are eating healthier and healthier, and I don't think that's ever going to go in reverse. Mm -hmm. I think it's only going to keep going in that direction. Bobby. So we have to really get very comfortable with cooking vegetables in lots of different ways. Yeah, what did your girlfriend say when she tried that oh, first wow. bite? I was just curious. <laughs> She's trying to help you here. Uh, trying no, to help what, a brother out. So what, what did she say? <laughs> Whew. Um, you know what? I haven't made this for her yet, to be perfectly honest. Oh. But you know, it's it's on the dock. Well, it's been it's been it's been the summer now. Now you know it's getting a little yeah, bit. Yeah, you're right. Uh, well, is she there right yeah. now? You told me to give it to her. No, she's not <laughs> here. But, but yeah, yeah. thanks so much for having me. You're the best. Bobby, we love you so much. Does this is so fun to, to tease you. you. Does she have a key to the elevator? <laughs> <laughs> what else is in your book? We have a couple seconds. What other kind of recipes? Are they all vegetarian? Uh, all, you know, th there's all kinds of things, from like piri piri chicken to shrimp and grits. Oh. Um, 
there's some great desserts like a spiced chocolate pudding, yeah. um, eggplant rollatini. I mean, mm. you know, um, Salisbury steak. There's, there's really classic home style dishes. Mm, cool. And then there's a couple of things in that are a little bit fancier. But it's, a, you know, if, if you're a fan of the show, I mean, uh, Al's been on the show a couple of times. Um, it's such a fun show, and um, we've, mm -hmm. we've, we've shot over 500 episodes. Jeez. Wow. Cool. And, only uh, lost so twice. obviously it's they're amazing. not all in this yeah. book. This is volume one, Our, so oh, hopefully wow. there'll yeah. be more volumes. It's a terrific right. book. Thank you, Bobby. It's a great show. Yeah, it's a great book. Thank, Thank you, Bobby. Bobby. Good luck Bye. with the relationship. You guys are the best. This morning, the one and only Padma Lakshmi. Hi, everybody. Uh, Padma, of course, host on Bravo's Top Chef. Tonight is that hit show's 19th season finale. Chef's getting one last chance to compete for the grand prize. Padma, you've been there from the very beginning with the exception of that first season. Yes, that's right. Yeah, and it's been a really long, long, great ride. Yeah. I never thought that it would last this long, but I mean, you know, we're doing well, the show is better than ever, and yeah. the critics still like it, so I'm very lucky. And not to give away too much, but the scuttlebutt is next season, you guys are going to do something you've never done before.